Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031. Or visit our website www.techweld.nz Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the Technical Welding Services 2023 World Invitation Superstock Championships. This is Paradise Valley Speedway in Rotorua, New Zealand, Aotearoa. The sun is shining, the blue skies are out, and for Kiwi Speedway fans, tonight or this weekend is something we have been waiting for for a long, long time. In amongst this summer of despair and all of the rain, We've been starved of top quality speedway, but tonight that completely changes. It is a big weekend, it always has been, this World Invitation Superstock Championship since 1987 when Chris Alwell from the UK came to New Zealand and wiped the track with the Kiwi drivers and won that first ever World 240s Championship. Since then it has gone on to become one of the premier events in New Zealand Speedway and has got bigger and better every year. Since 2005 it's been held here at Paradise Valley Speedway and this weekend we welcome back our overseas drivers which makes the World 240s the meeting that it is. My name is Paul Hickey, it is my pleasure to be your host and anchor across the course of this weekend here at Paradise Valley Speedway. There is so much to dissect across tonight. Joining me on commentary once again here at the track and through the Pits TV, Bianca Mudge, kia ora, welcome back to Rotorua. I can't wait to see some cars put some laps in in anger. We are all in the same boat and we've gone from one extreme to the other. We were in Huntley a couple of weeks ago where we were drenched and now we're like 50 degrees in the shade. We're absolutely, absolutely cooking. But we're all rearing to go. We hear the rumble of the cars mm. because we're all excited. We're about to see these Great Britain drivers out on the track for the first time having their practice. Yeah, we've got uh, as part of the support program this weekend the Aotearoa Ladies Stock Car Crown sponsored by Sharky's Engineering. Uh, so the Ladies are going to get to go out and have a practice uh, very shortly as well. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a moment. Also joining us on commentary this weekend, Stu Russell, uh, normally down Palmerston Northways uh, is where he's based. Uh, your first time on the mic here at the World 240s. Welcome to Paradise Valley. What a weekend it's going to be. You're right, pal. Did I get that right? You're right, pal. Hey, good to have the palms back. <laughs> uh, mate, I'm, I'm stoked to be here, obviously, working with uh, with you guys. Barry's up in the box, Minty will float around somewhere eventually. Uh, the best in the business, it's cool to be here with you. But just great to have some awesome super stock racing in the sun. We've been, uh, we've been deprived of it this season and I'm really looking forward to it. I know New Zealand Champs is meant to be the pinnacle event of the season, but let's be fair, it's always the World 240s. I'm just really stoked that the first time in four years we've got our British friends back. I've absolutely missed them. You know, Frankie's back three-time winner of the event, young Charlie, world champion. We've got two of the cloggies here as well. It's just awesome to be back full stop with these guys and, and a huge entry list as well. Can't wait to get into it. No, we can't. We're going to see the practice out very shortly. In fact, you might be able to just see over our shoulder the uh, English drivers are about to head out on track for the practice. Stu mentioned it, Bianca, this, the World 240s. As a, as a pinnacle event now, the drivers just love coming here and racing in Rotorua. It's a true stock car track and they go hard every year at this World 240s. 100%. You'll see, uh, how many, uh, I mean one tonne per car? So one 20, and a half. One, one and, and a half, half tonne. Let's do the maths. 26 cars at one and a half tonne going through the uh, the first corner. Not one of them is going to lift. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> it certainly is. So this event has become one of the pinnacle events in speedway in New Zealand. Here we go, take a look there, 515GB, 
three-time winner of this World 240s event, Frankie Wayman Jr. He is a true legend when it comes to stock car racing right around the world. He's won so many titles. And the fact that he continues to come back to New Zealand and be in contention year after year is a true mark of the man. We've got, of course, this big contingent here. and uh, You've had a chat to a few of these guys over the time, Stu, and they're pretty amped about it. I oh, certainly are. I've caught up with Charlie Swarter. You can see the, the world champion in behind here, the wild child, Charlie Swarter. And, uh, mate, he's uh, 20 years old. He's a world champion. He came uh, through a, a massive world final at Skegness to take out that title, and, and he's just pumped to be here. I talked to him after it on uh, the Doing in the Dirt, and he talked about it's a dream come true to obviously win the title, but the bonus is he gets to come to New Zealand not only like we get to when we go over there, but he gets to represent Briska and the, and the UK and come over here as the champion and with the one on the side of the car. He's still actually got the number five when he races back at home with the gold top, so it's great to see the number one on the side here as well and just get into it. He's pumped to be here. Obviously, young Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr., uh, often referred to as Ted as well. You know, he's been over here a few years now. And, and we've seen him come from a young age, much like the likes of Asher and Ethan and Jaden and Jack, um, developed through from the uh, World 240s to teams racing and the likes following in Frankie's step. And then Yelly and Niels, quite quiet young fellas from, uh, from Holland, but true stock car drivers. They actually race under a Brisker license over there and they qualify through the Brisker events um, rather than as being internationals as proper Brisker drivers and they're always at the pointy end of the field using that bumper. They got a couple of brand new Frankie Wayman chassis this year and they have been at the forefront of uh, Brisker F1 racing. Right, so we'll just see if we're going to cross to the track and get some uh, footage in of the practice. Uh, these guys will let us know. Um, so Bianca, it's exciting to have uh, the overseas driver's back. Disappointing though that our defending champion Jason Long isn't going to be here. He has retired from the sport. He has as well as uh, Mick Vickery who I've seen uh, floating around with the Great Britain team as well. It's really strange to be talking about these kind of championships without the likes of Peter Bengston, like mm. I say, Jason Long, Mick Vickery. And if we rewind 12 months, there was Peter Bengston and Jason Long had the best drag race I think I've ever seen in heat two. It was going off. William Humphrey's another one from yeah, last year who you know played a played yeah. a major role in uh, some of the action here. Uh, so we've got the practice happening very shortly. Our grand parade is going to get underway uh, around six o'clock tonight. We're going to wander down and have a chat to some of the drivers in the pits. Barry Brown, as Stu already mentioned, is in the box, and so he will be our expert uh, comments man and do the analysis across the course of the weekend uh, with all of the points. So there's lots more to chat about over the course of the two nights. Cannot wait. It's going to be exciting. I'm absolutely pumped. Oh, absolutely fizzing. Normally I'm sitting up there in turn three, I've got the chilli <laughs> bin, I'm ready to go, but I think I'm more excited this year to be a part of this and just this great event, it's always awesome. Right. How is it all going to work? Well, we've got five qualifying groups tonight. The top four only will go through to the final. So when these cars, the groups, got 25 or 26 cars in each group, being in the top four is going to be such a battle for all of these super stock drivers. But they're going to put it on the line. They want to be in the big dance tomorrow night. It is the TWS World Invitation Super Stock Championships. A big two nights ahead. Grab your favourite seat if you're at home, watching through the Pits TV, especially to all of those uh, watching overseas and across the far side of the world, looking to see some of your stars doing it here this weekend. We welcome you in, and uh, the full game getting underway at 6 o'clock. 100%. Like we say, we'll do a grid, uh, we'll do a grand parade. We might be able to go and get some uh, drivers while we do a pit walk. We've got the girls lined up, ready to go. Um, I don't know if you can see or hear, but we can hear the roars of the super behind us. We're ready. We're right, going. Cannot we're going. Wait. Here we go, Sue. I'll hand this one over to you. I'm going to head back to the box and the pit walk and some of the chats with our drivers who are competing this weekend coming at you real soon. Josh Kahui, we've been hanging out in the sun for about 10 minutes. Man, it's hot down here. Oh, yeah. It's bloody great to see a bit of sun anyway. Better than the rain, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. So for you guys at home who don't know that who this is, this is Josh Kahui. He's uh, here in the 88W, so making up a small contingent from Wellington. How was your trip up? I hear it was hot with a bit of road work. Yeah, yeah, no, it was good until we uh, got just shot of Taupo, and then we maybe sat there for a couple of hours. But it wasn't raining, so who cares? Well, let's just hope you're going faster out here on uh, tonight on the track then, yeah? 
Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Well, that's um, anything out of turn one and turn two, and down the back straight is all on. Yeah. Look, let's talk about what may happen out here. You're in the red group. Your first race is off grid ten. That's not too bad for that first turn push. And like we were saying before, if you can make it round there cleanly, that's half, half the battle done on this race. Yeah, 100 percent. Um, yeah. Oh, any grid doesn't really worry me. Just. Um, yeah, as long as I get around turn one and two and uh, get into a groove and go from there. And you're not a stranger to winning here. You have actually won a race here before, but it's still a hard track to win at. Oh, yeah, yeah. The calibre of the cars, um, it's anyone's game. So, yeah, just put your best foot forward and, yeah, see what happens, to be honest. And, of course, this is the kind of race where you can't rely on horsepower alone. A lot of it, maybe about 99% of it comes down to luck. Oh, yeah, 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 you got to have a bit of luck, um, probably a few friends as well, but um, yeah, yeah, we'll just go out and do our own thing and see what happens. Well, we're all greeted up in your group, your red group. If you look up and down the cards here, who do you see as your biggest rival? Oh, I don't know, they all are. Could be anybody, eh? Yeah, yeah, I'm not actually too worried. Um, yeah, oh, there's a lot of good gear around here, so yeah, anyone that um, anyone that's out there, has got a chance, so yeah, my chances are just as good as theirs. Now Josh, tell us about the car, it looks mint, Tinted Car Racing, the main sponsor. I have got one of the hats, but um, oh sorry, we're going to leave you, you need to go get ready for the Grand Braid Trodge, might finish this interview out on the track, eh? Alright, sweet ass, cheers mate, thank you. Alright, there we see, actually leading the Grand Parade around is your defending champion, Jason Long. That, that's the car he won in last year, that's Jason on the bonnet uh, with the trophy. Uh, the car now uh, in the hands of uh, Tyson Wooden out of Huntley. So great to see Jason Long uh, here this weekend and uh, part of the Grand Parade. The big flag and the big fin. <laughs> the 1GB, the current Brisker World Final or World Champion. Charlie Sorter, that's the uh, 3NZ super stock of Mitch Vickery uh, that Charlie is driving this weekend. So his first visit here to New Zealand, uh, the track's going to be very different for him, what he's used to racing on. And that practice session out there earlier on certainly not going to give them a true indication of uh, how these cars are going to go and uh, how to drive these cars. Uh, but they've got a few more practice sessions across the course of tonight before they join that finals field tomorrow night. Mark Costello in the 198 is uh, out there. Of course, uh, another one of these drivers who's come through the stock car ranks and then into the, well, sorry, from youth mini stocks into stock cars and then into the super stocks. Geez, there are so many cars still out there in the pit area. 130-odd will be on track as part of the World 240s weekend. There's Quinn Ryan in the 46. Uh, he is a pre-qualifier. He won or missed out on last year's finals, which meant he raced in the second tier championship by winning that. Gave him automatic entry into the World 240s. Uh, so he's got the easy ride tonight. He's already guaranteed a spot in the uh, finals. Then we're going to head down onto the infield. And uh, Minty, you're there with our defending champion, who's not really the defending champion tonight. Well, he sort of is the defending champion because <laughs> he still holds the trophy at the moment. But Jason Long, let's just start off by saying, um, how's your health and how are you? No, nah, I'm um, yeah, coming a long way from where I was at uh, a few months ago. So... Yeah, stoked to be down here, but obviously want to be on this side of the fence rather than that side of the fence, but uh, it is what it is, got to look after the health, got kids and all that, so think about the family first and uh, yeah, worry about worry about uh, doing something competitive later on. Jason, they talk about concussion and it was that Brantfilly Shield challenge early on. What are the symptoms you had? I know it was headaches and lethargic and all those sorts of things. How long did it really come before you made that decision, hey, I've got to get out? Uh, yeah, I guess for me, like... I get a knock and I, I, I've never been asleep, I, I never ever go to sleep but I keep operating and then all of a sudden my vision goes or um, yeah I've had all sorts of issues, bright light, noise, I struggle, I've struggled over the last few months but um, yeah I mean I've come a long way, I can be down here by these noisy cars so that's bloody good but yeah I mean it's 
yeah, when you when you get a knock, you just got to realise it and stop, I guess. And um, it's taken me a few knocks to finally realise it. And now that I've been told and can't play with my kids and stuff, when I'm trying to run around, I'm getting headaches. You kind of realise it's no good for you. So, yeah, finally realised it, and I'm just happy I can run around with the kids again. Mate, I just can't say, look, there, there's some things that happen in a speedway career and you've achieved them. You know, you, you nailed the Grand Slam. It's a rarity. You, you've done all the things you could possibly do. Um, if there's ever a time to say how I was pretty bloody good at what I did, that was it, innit? Yeah, I guess uh, I was pretty relieved last year when I won this um, when I won this meeting uh, to get that Grand Slam. It was never anything we ever chased, but um, when you get that close to, to winning it, I guess you've got to have it in the back of your head. So, yeah, to, to win this, I was definitely relieved and, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to do with my family every week and um, yeah we, we went away every weekend together and just love what we do. Well mate congratulations on what a stellar speedway career and a great rugby career. I still don't know if I forgive you for taking the shield away from us and not letting us win but uh, hey that's what it is but uh, look after yourself be safe mate and uh, you'll be sorely missed but we know we see you in the pits. Yeah no thank you and thanks to everyone that supported me uh, especially over the last little bit and um, yeah we hope, hope you guys all have a great weekend down here. I think uh, probably the most relieving thing about being on uh, the other side of the fence is definitely going to be watching that freight train into turn one and, and not being a part of it. So, uh, yeah, I can enjoy that. And, um, yeah, hopefully uh, you guys have a good weekend too. Cheers, mate. You be safe and go and spend some good time with the family. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, that is uh, good to hear that the health of Jason Long is uh, much improved now. And he's going to love, well, like I say, he'd much rather be out there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's certainly going to enjoy watching along with the rest of us tonight here at Paradise Valley Speedway. Thanks to Technical Welding Services, the World Invitation Superstock Championships. As we take a look at uh, these drivers that are still making their way out onto the track, the 27W Simon Davis is out there. So, uh, across now to uh, Pitty, I think, on the infield. Stu. Or Stu. Yeah, yeah, I'm down here on the infield and I'm going to uh, interrupt this Palmy team chat. First, I'll talk to Lucas. Hey, come over here, mate. Look, this is uh, your first World 240s and just stand here and look around. This is huge, eh? Oh, shit, yeah, it's a big bloody achievement for me to actually make it here with last year popping a motor the weekend before, so we're happy to be here. How are you finding the Superstock gig compared to the last, you know, few seasons in a, in a top-notch stock car? Oh, there's a few more ponies out there, eh? Um, but yeah, you're jumping in, into the deep end with all the big boys, so you got to play for keeps in here. When you look at those grids and it's your, your first big championship and you think, uh, not the grids, sorry, the groups, your first big championship, you just think, wow, like, you, you probably looked up to some of these guys in there. Oh, yeah, followed most of these guys since I was growing up, so it's cool to even just rub paint with them or see them out there. So, big achievement for me, I love it. Yeah, beauty, mate. Hey, go well this week here, mate. I'm going to quickly grab Jack Myers. He's busy talking in Mike's car. Jack, come over here quickly, mate. Champion two years ago, mate. It's uh, good to have you back. You've been a bit busy this season. We thought we'd almost miss you at the New Zealands. Hopefully we'll see you there then, but uh, when it's rerun. But, mate, World 240s, it's always a biggie, and we've got the Poms back as well. Yeah, yeah, that just adds to the hype a bit, doesn't it? Um, but, yeah, it's just going to be tough enough. We just take it stages. If we can get through each race cleanly, and hopefully we end up in the top four at the end of the night, that's the first part of it done and then it's anyone's tomorrow really it doesn't matter if you're the best or have the best gear it's all there's a lot of luck involved isn't there so yeah we'll just hope that for the best and uh, see what happens mate you you're a qualifying group i went through it and i had to pick four drivers obviously with uh, with the lads and she was a toughie yeah <laughs> uh, like i say it, it only takes a puncher or be half spun you know but even back when they you know when there was enough cars that they took about six out of each group. It was still hard enough even then, you know, so you just got to be so clean and just be patient, I suppose, because it just takes that one little mistake or be in the wrong place at the wrong time and it's all over, just like that. Certainly is, mate. Hey, go well. All the best, and hopefully we can see you make it through tonight too. And uh, we saw the Palmy boys and, and uh, various other clubs go to work last season. You were a big part of it the last couple of years. Hopefully we can see that again. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. Eh? Everybody loves to see that action in the last heat, so... Go out there and do it, and um, we'll jump out and have a beer and a laugh with each other afterwards. Do you right, mate. Jack Myers, I think Bianca's uh, got someone behind me. There we go. I do, I do. We go from a veteran to a newbie. This is Josh Patterson. I'm not paying favourites, but he's from Wellington as well. So, Josh, here you are, second World 240s, but the first time in this car. 
Yep, second World 240s, um, first time in this car, so we're pretty excited. Josh went pretty good in this car last year, so yeah, we'll give it a shot. I think Josh finished about fourth or fifth last year and was a runner-up the year before. But listen, Josh is sitting over here, so we've got him on fast dial if we need any uh, technical issue problems. <laughs> Yeah, he's in our group, so hopefully we can beat him. <laughs> oh, Josh, did you hear that? He's 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 pretending he didn't hear you. So um, you've made the you made the big journey up. We're sponsored by FH Group. Tell us, I mean, how are the nerves right now? This is only your second campaign here. The nerves must be a little bit on edge. Uh, they're all right at the moment, but I'm sure they'll kick in when we're belted into the car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and do you know your grid position off your first race? I'm off grid 10, so not that ideal, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I don't know, I've seen a lot of success off grid 10, but hey Josh, just a little word for you, a little bit of uh, advice, strap up super tight. Yeah, we sure will be. <laughs> hey, what we'll do is we'll leave you, we might actually go straight over to Josh Prentice, who's sitting over here. This is actually the debut of his brand new car, nobody's actually even seen it yet, it hasn't even been sign written. Have a look at it. Hey mate, how you doing? Josh, you see me and you're like, oh god, here she comes. Josh, mate, how you doing? You're like in a big open space in here. Yeah, yeah, no, it's all good. Have you actually tested this car on the track yet, or is this day one? No, this is fresh out of the box yesterday, so straight into it tonight. And so you finished this about 5 o'clock last night, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, massive thanks to Reed's Race Cars, uh, gone above and beyond to make this happen and uh, yeah we're here so we're looking forward to getting out there and uh, seeing what we can do in it. Jamie Hamilton but Jamie you were my pick to win and you don't have your car here what's going on? Uh, well I, I would love to be here but um, we've got a turn around for Team Champs in two weeks and driving all the way back to Christchurch to repair the car and bring it back up. It's too much of a mission on the whole team and all that, so yeah, we have to miss it out, unfortunately. And sometimes you do have to call that sacrifice, eh? One for the other to make it work. Yeah, exactly, yeah, we just got to make the sacrifice. I'd have, team Champs is my favourite meeting by far, so missing it out just seems like a no-brainer to me. Absolutely, 100%. Listen, all the cars are moving around us, so we better get out the way, but hey, we really look forward to seeing you in Team Champs. You are in the team, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Hey, am I still on? All right. I've got Frankie Wayman Jr. in the house. It's great to have you back. First time in four years, Frankie. It's good to be back here in Rotorua. Is it that long? Yeah, absolutely missed it to death. We really have, but yeah, just glad to be back. All these cars out here, unbelievable. I didn't understand a word you said then, but it's brilliant. <laughs> it's good. I'll agree with you. Hey, look, I know you've just done a few hot laps around the place before. wasn't the greatest... Uh, out there but hey it's good to just get some seat time and finally yeah. put your foot to the floor on Rotorua. Yeah definitely obviously we've all looked forward to it we haven't been able to get over here obviously we're back now there's five of us good strong team looking forward to it. You've literally come from uh, was it Auto Fest last weekend yeah, in NEC, yeah, NEC yeah. Yeah. and the indoor racing yeah. so you've been racing last on weekend <laughs> literally jumped on a flight on uh, Tuesday Wednesday yeah, or something we like that straight ran to here. the plane run to the plane to get on it yeah and get over here so lost all your gear in between yeah we've still not got no gear none of us so unfortunately we haven't got any suitcases but we've sort of made do but yeah we're here come to enjoy it brilliant hey we'll catch up plenty over the weekend it's enjoy just great to have you back <laughs> say hello to everyone in the morning over there in England and tell them it's get on here and have a watch yeah that, I mean you know it's snowing at home minus four yeah I'm absolutely loving it thank you brilliant Frankie Wayman Jr three-time champion it's great to have him back Bianca come over here how good is it to be back here for the world 240s we didn't have uh, this weather in Huntley but we're going to have it in March but how good and I tell you what I'm absolutely pumped for these five international drivers because they just like look at Frankie the best of the best yep. in Britain he's here we've got uh, the Dutch boys out here I want to actually have a chat to Zane Dykstra at some point through the night because they may not be physical international drivers but they're Dutchies as well <laughs> they're flying the flag Bianca, it's great. We're going to throw back up to Paul Hickey and Barry Brown to, uh, to keep going, but any words while we're here and just soaking this revs up? Look, we're just soaking it all up at the minute. The crowd is coming in, the sun is going down, so we might actually cool down. But uh, the rumble of these cars is like the first of the season for us. This is like the biggest race or meeting that we've had so far. Everybody is really excited. I haven't yet met the uh, Great Britain drivers, so I'm making a beeline over there now. We'll throw back up to the guys up, uh, up the top and we'll get back to some pit talks soon.
All right, thank you very much, Bianca and Stu and Minty for those uh, catch-ups uh, down there on the infield. And everybody's looking fairly relaxed at the moment, uh, Barry, you'd have to say, in, in, in those chats. But I, I guess that'll change up a gear as it always does, does in uh, 20 minutes or so. Are you finding your computer, laptop or gaming machine is getting slow or not working at all? And can you not afford to buy a new one? We Reuse IT is one of New Zealand's leading refurbished computer sales and service specialists that allows you to get new or refurbished machines without hurting the pocket. Shop online or visit our expert team today that will help guide you to the technology that best suits you. Afterpay is available. Visit us at 135 Cuba Street, Palmerston North or head to our website at www.wereuseit.co.nz. No matter how hard the job is, we suck it up and get it done. No matter how dirty our hands have to get, we suck it up and get it done. Suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Out for suck's sake, suck it up. Suck it up, suck it up. Out for suck's sake, suck it up. Suck it up and get it done with suckitup.co.nz. So look at that lineup, ladies and gentlemen. The first of five qualifying groups here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway for the TWS World Invitation Superstock Championships 2023. How good is it to be a truly international event as we welcome back our overseas contingent? They're in the finals tomorrow night already. All five of them are there, but the battle begins for the 20 Kiwi spots and the green flag drops and we are underway at Paradise Valley. And it's gonna be Mark Costello from the outside who goes, oh, too hard. Spins himself up round there and he's gonna be pushed backwards all the way through. We've got a couple around. And Costello's come to a stop actually. Problems as well for the uh, 88 of Josh Kahui. Around goes Chad Ace. Again in front of the field. A lot of smoke coming from the 115 of Jockey Short. A lot of push and shove coming off turn four. Out front, though, it's the former New Zealand champion, Malcolm Nartai. All the way up from Christchurch. He's going to lead the way. From Zane Riddick, Mark Dunn, Michael Rumney. Rumney charges his way up into second spot in the 7R car. Another one's gone around. That's a 5P of Gareth Edwards. Lights are red. Bottom, end, bottom end's dropped out of Chad Ace's car. The bottom end has dropped out of Chad Ace's car on the left rear. So we've gone red. Not sure what the stoppage... Oh, yeah, we've got a spring on the track. So Minty's going to jump over and have a quick look at the Chad Ace car. The spring will get picked up off turn four. So as we assess this situation straight away, we'll get an update from Minty in a moment. Malcolm Nartai, our race leader. Two and a bit laps into it. Back end's just let go completely, Paul. So uh, it's dropped on the left-hand side and just hanging on the ground. Um, tyres intact, wheels are intact, but the suspension and back end are broken. Right, race leader is the 19C in turn number three and four, followed by 61, seven, and it looks like the 421 of Vance Brown and the 93 Mark Dunn battling for fourth spot. Right, 26 for a win, 25 for second, 24 for third, and so on. That's how our points will run tonight in qualifying for the TWS World 240s. So Asher Rees, he's up into ninth spot after starting on grid 23. Can you believe it? <laughs> yes, I, I suppose, silly question, of course, of course we can believe that. Big bounce off the wall for Edwards in car five, Slater as well in 77, tries to get the orange machine underway, there's your 277 side by side through turns three and four, uh, sorry, turns one and two. New Zealand stock car champions doing battle there together with uh, Alan McRobbie and Asher Rees for a moment. Rees comes in, dives in underneath the 93. Of Mark Dunn tries to push him sideways through turn four, makes the pass. Just watching Asher Rees there too, just gently going into the other car, so he doesn't want to be in danger of picking up a uh, right hand side puncher, obviously. No, 
Wayne is uh, a big issue nowadays. The one NZ is flying. He's uh, moved up now into sixth spot. Still, he's got a problem though, isn't he? The one NZ actually reads that can't really pushing into turn one until he's just lost two spots. As he ran a wee bit wide there, Malcolm no, Nato. He's got a problem, all right. So trying to pick up what the issue. It's a setup issue, isn't it? There's something really wrong there with the 1NZ. He was flying. Mike McCarthy comes together with Jonty Short. Those two both lose a whole lot of spots coming off turn two. Still Malcolm Nartai with four laps to go. The 19th C. Sixty-one. Zane Riddick right on his tail now as they get right up into the back markers in the lap traffic. Lights are red. We've gone red again. So Asher Reese dropped all the way back to 18th now. So he got up to what, 6th did you say, Paul? yep. So uh, coming from grid 23, moved up 17 spots, and he's now dropped back down a dozen spots from where he'd got up to. So not a puncture, obviously, but uh, something washing that front end out every time he turns left. And uh, sadly on the speedway track, it's the only way he does want to turn. Right, so of replays on the super screen for you now. Just checking on, I think, the front wheel of 93 too. The left front of that looks like it's a little bit low on air. Well, there should be. Yep, although inside is okay. Inside tyres are okay. Uh, outside wheels, or outside tyres, punctures there. Uh, you must retire nowadays. So the problem, uh, the stoppage for the 421 of Ants Brown was running up towards the front of the field as well early on. But he's dropped back. Yeah, he started from grid, grid three. three. Yeah. So, uh, it kind of helps to be running at the front of the field. <laughs> explains why you're running at the front of the field early on, doesn't it? Uh, so we are 10 laps in. These are 12 lap heats. So the race leader, Malcolm Nardo, has increased that lead or opened out a nice little gap. Michael Rubney. Pushes his way up into second place. Here's your race leader. 19C. Through turns one and two. Nice and carefully edging his way through. Oh, Zane Riddick. Almost got caught up there. The 77 is loose as a goose. Again. And the chicken flag drops for the 19. Malcolm Nato will take the win. So let's take a look at how they finish there these are unofficial results 19c Malcolm Nartai home in first place 1.2 seconds ahead of Michael Rumney 7r then it was 61s Zane Riddick 21r Brendan Ashton in fourth and Mark Dunn rounding out the top five it was then 247a Hayden Chapman 66r Steve Hampton 136p Maddie Wise 99b Jacob Buckrell and 62p Adam Joblin rounds out the top 10 in red group. Fastest lap of the race might have been the, uh, ja it was Jacob Buckrell again. We talked about him being the fastest yes. car on the track at the uh, Huntley practice for the New Zealand champs and he pulls out the fastest lap here tonight. A 17 one two, two for the opening heat. So yeah, started from grid 15. And uh, yeah, made, made a bit of ground late. Where did he finish up ninth there in the end? So yeah, only made half a dozen places. But if you made half a dozen places in every race, 
Yep. That's uh, going to see you looking pretty good by the end of it, isn't it? So, pretty good start there for Jacob Buckrell. He's got a good three in his uh, next heat, then a 19. So, another chance to make some good ground from the back. So, that's what the kind of... Hi, I'm Brittany Carpenter, driver of 85 GM, based out of Greymouth. I use wholesale tyres, coloured chrome rims on my car. If you're looking for something unique and different on your car, contact Wholesale Tyres to get these coloured rims. Or get a hold of them on Facebook at Wholesale Tyres, or go onto their website, which is www.wholesaletyres.net.nz. See you trackside. Need coloured chrome rims? Wholesale Tyres. Good rims, better prices, great people. So we saw Jacob Buckrell go uh, pretty well in that first heat in red group. Mm. From the Humpty practice, the guys that were second and third quickest, with the 38B of Zane Dykstra, and the 81R Damien Orr, they're both in this group. So uh, we'll just keep an eye on them, see whether that pace has flowed through. But we do know that, yeah, people were experimenting with different things, and not every car had its transmitter on at the time but uh, it did give us a bit of an idea on uh, who was going quickly anyway but keeping out of trouble is the biggest thing and it'll be interesting to see what's happened to Adjuris there because it was straight after I said how gently he was nudging other cars to one side trying to make sure he didn't pick up a, a uh, right front puncture or something when he was just contacting these other cars and next minute there's a uh, problem. So the Cody McKee car is gone, and well, it's back in. He's gone from the three-minute bell issue. The water truck will come off, and we are lining up. So the 669 of Brendan Ty will sit on pole alongside him. Simon Davis in the 27W. 49M Regan McKenzie on grid three. The 335 Kenneth Hunter on the outside of row two. So here we go. The Cody McKee's pulled into grid six. He'll be alongside 6W of Paul Gaskin. Row four, the 274 of Mike Honick. And the 461 of Brett Kelly out of Hawke's Bay. And rounding out the front ten grids. And we've got the 119V of Zach Harris and 29G James Clark. So those are your front five rows. Qualifying race number one for Green Group at the TWS World Invitation Superstock Championships. So we'll wait for the pace ute to pull off. And then we go for 12 laps. Green flag drops. Oh, a few up there on the grass as they make their way through. Turn one and two for the first time. And it's Davis who will lead them away. Couple out there into the concrete. Problems for Damien Orr and Zane Dykstra. Those two that Barry mentioned. They both drop right down at the back of the pack. Round goes the 49, getting tangled up with 37, Shane Denham and Regan McKenzie. Oh, a couple of big crunches going down into turn one and two. And will we go red here because the Regan McKenzie car is still in the walleye, still moving. They're going to give him a chance to flick it around. So still mobile in a way. Alex Hill from Nelson, good to have him back up here as one of the stalwarts nowadays of the 
South Island contingent. Problems again for 49. I think we're going to have to go red for him. This time he's sitting in the wall in turn one and two. Simon Davis, Brendan Ty, Ken Hunter, your top three off turn four onto the pit straight. Maybe the referees are happy with him there. So issues for Callan Clark in the 98. Oh, he's got lost the steering rod there by the looks of it. So he's going to pull to the infield. the 4-6-1. Everybody else needs to avoid him in turn two. Most of them do. Ken Hunter, the race leader now in the 335. Got himself a nice little gap too, put a back marker between himself and Brendan Ty. White flag for Hunter. This is the battle for second between Cody McKee and Ty. Ty runs a little bit wide up the concrete wall. McKee up the inside. So Hunter will take the win. From McKee and Ty. Oh, not a lot going on in that race, just a lot of roundy roundy. Battling for positions. We'll get the analysis from Barry in a moment, the big moves. But Ken Hunter, 335, takes the win from 72A Cody McKee. 669 W Brendan Ty in third. Then the 6W are Paul Gaskin. 29G James Clark. Dylan Ashton. In sixth place, Jordan Deere up into seventh in the 581P. Randall Tarrant, Brent Stewart, and Simon Davis round out your top. much of that three minute bell getting used up there. Let's take a look at how they're gridding up. He was the winner two years ago. Jack Myers sits on pole position. Alongside him, Simon Joblin in 72, who has won this three times. Row two is Brooke Clarkson. 
On grid three, Trent James. On grid four, in the 58. Then we see the 27 of Dave Merritt. Outside him, the 127 of Ethan Reeves. He'll be another one of the favourites this weekend. There's your 79 of Matt Jarvis. Outside him, as already mentioned, Carlo Putadanui. And rounding out the front five rows, Scott McEwen in 15B and the 16B of Brett Loveridge. Righty ho, set to go racing. It's another 12 lap, a qualifying race number one for Blue Group, and we are go. And it was uh, the James car, <coughs> uh, the 56. Trent James had got his nose in front momentarily, but look at Asher Reeves, he's just raced through the field there early. Oh, big, big off for the uh, 27. Then he got clobbered as well. With that car sitting there, round goes 26. Oh, bit of action going on in this one with cars left, right and centre. Couple left stranded down in turn three and four. Most of making it through nicely. Oh, Carlo Putadanui catches him. Oh, that's the 51 that's stranded down there of Jason Matic. Now we'll go red. So a hectic and crazy start for the opening couple of laps for this blue group. So the 51 gets sent in field. 81 is Trent James. So a quick scan of the track. The orange. Todd and Pollock car gets pushed off in the 27. So the 51 that just wouldn't restart. No refire from the 51. Okay, thank you. All right, waiting for the restart. Here we go. So 127 is your race leader. Down the main straight goes Ethan Rees. Jack Myers puts the big bumper into Trent James, tries to send him wide. Two two one a pretty loose down the pit straight. The 15 car pulls onto the infield. Former North Island champ Matt Nielsen having some issues out there in the 147. As he clambered down the concrete wall, the pink 717, that's last year's winning car. But behind the wheel this year, Tyson Wooten started down on grid 23. He's made his way up into 15th place right now. Out front though, still 127. Oh, around goes 79. Quick move. Uh, from the 23 of Caleb Ashton to miss the spinning Matt Jarvis. Ethan Rees, Jack Myers running at the front, 127 and 88, although Trent James in 56. Good battle with Myers, but Myers just gets his nose in front. Now James comes back and looks up the inside in the 56. Side by side battle for second place with four laps to go. So big problems for the uh, 26 of Kaylin Mooney. Got sent from pillar to post early on in the heat. So Asher Rees calmly making his way through the back markers. Brick Loveridge is up into fourth place in the 16. 
Oh, geez, another former World 240s winner, Keegan Levine, out there as well in this field. It is stacked. White flag out, one to go for Ethan Rees. That's the first time I noticed Keegan Levine in the field, but he's moved his way up into sixth place. Starting on grid 15. And the chequered flag falls for Rees. Make that Ethan Rees in the 127 for the win. Right, so unofficial top 10 for you. 127 G, Ethan Rees takes the win. Nearly three seconds ahead of Jack Myers. In second place, Trent James, 56 V in third. Brett Loveridge, 16 B, 272 M. Seth McConchie rounds out the top five. It was in 5 W, Keegan Levine, 87 G, Brody James. 72p Simon Joblin, 351 Paul Vasey, and Rebecca Barr, 34p up from grid 17 to finish in 10th place. Fastest lap of the race, Ethan Rees, no surprise there, the way he was slicing through the field at the front. A 17.065, and I think that is the fastest lap of the night. So far, so far, not yet down into the 16s. Get the feeling, not going to be long before we see that happen. So three out of our five groups we've now seen on track. Anderton Decorators are a long established Canterbury company covering the whole of the South Island who love to support their local community. If you require expert advice from design to application then Shane has an expert team to ensure your next project is hassle free with a professional finish. Floor to ceilings, walls to roof, inside outside, commercial or residential. Let our team take the hassle out of your decorating. Give us a call now on 027 Painting. That's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators, we have you covered. The St Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Can Do Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Can Do Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Can Do Fishing Kinner, Fish or Power. Can Do Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. Alright Barry, uh, we've got some of the moves for that one. Really only had a couple of big ones in that one, Paul. Uh, plus 14 to the 87 G of Brody James. He went from 21st up to 7th. And the 23R of Caleb Ashton from 25th up to 11th, also plus 14. Next best was Keegan Levine with a plus 9, but of note probably Simon Joplin, one of only two, he has won it three times, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. One yep. of only uh, two three-time winners of the World 240s. He actually went backwards uh, by six spots in that one. 
started on grid two and finished up eighth. So uh, what tyres are they running? I wonder. Do we do, do we even start that discussion? Well, maybe yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Right. We'll ask our tyre man. <laughs> Yellow group are on track, and we are about to go racing. And the green flag drops and we're underway. And the 57 of Dylan Marshall from pole will lead them through. Tim Ross, big bounce off the concrete wall. Couple sideways, couple backwards. Look at this big push all the way down the pit straight for Les Hepworth. Oh, it's a major front end damage for Jamie Stanaway with his left front, so he pulls to the infield. So race leader now is the 13W of Brad McGee. Big punt on Wayne Hemi from Jaden Ward as he makes his way through. Josh Prentice as well. That's a ding dong battle going on between those guys down into turn four. So still the 13W of Brad McGee. Cruncher down there as Wayne Hemi got sideways and got caught up in there uh, along with Adamson. Got one almost up and over. And a big damaged wing on the Paul Maybe car as he limps down the pit straight. Oh, the race leader coming under some pressure now. Down the main straight, down into turn three. 13 and 57, that is the battle for the lead. Here comes Hayden Hart as well in the 166 and 144, Tim Ross. Dale Stewart, first night out at home in the uh, new 94. Lights go red. So the wing of Paul maybe will retrieve that one. Off the track. So nine laps into this one. 57 is Dylan Marshall. A couple of replays. Coming in, this is on the big screen, check this out. This is where the uh, car almost went up and over. I couldn't quite see who that was. That was the 722 uh, of David Lowe. He's since retired. So on track in turn one, the white car with the fluoro on it. That's Brad McGee, 13, he is your race leader. 57, 166, the second and third. Let's go. Oh, round goes the 17. Troy Mace. Oh, on the 66, got issues down there as well. Dylan Towler. So white flag is out, one to go. Brad McGee just putting a little bit of a gap between himself and those chases now. Oh, as Holloway goes around, spins himself up. 
on the race leader could get caught in no he's going to find his way through just So provisional results, Let's take a look through that top 10, 13 W, Brad McGee takes the win, now off the front row, 166 Hayden Hart in second, then 57 V Dylan Marshall, Tim Ross 144 G in fourth and Dale Stewart 94 R in fifth, it was then 29 M Ryan Hunt, 971 C Jaden Ward, 5 G Josh Prentice, 40 80 in Brett Nichols and the 591P of Wayne Hemi, who rounded out uh, the top 10 for that one. Oh, sorry, Barry. No, Jaden Ward coming from uh, grid 24 in that one. I think, what was he? Uh, uh, grid 21, sorry. Grid 20, no, he was 24, up to 7th. So, um, yeah, massive move there from the 971C. Ethan Reeves here, he's just uh, sorting out his uh, radio mate, race one win, nice and solid there. Oh yeah, started at the front so I sort of had to go forward from there and uh, yeah, car felt good and track was good so yeah, can't complain. I was just going to say that track looked a bit uh, wet out there when the Poms were out there practicing but obviously we, we knew it was going to dry out at some point. Has she got plenty of drive in it? Yeah, it's got plenty of drive, it's, it's, it's got a nice slick line around the whole whole middle of the track, we sort of st stay tight and, you, and you're all good, yeah, yeah. Right, looks like you're starting off, uh, what is that, grid 19 for the next one? Yeah, grid 19 and then 14 for the last one, so just keep pushing now and hopefully make the final tomorrow. Those inside grids certainly help, eh? Yeah, they do, especially in this tight corner here, man. If you're, if you're out there and you get smoked, you might say goodnight to your weekend, eh? Uh -huh, yeah, that's the one. Right, there's Ethan, we'll let you get back to working on the cars. got three cars, or well, five you count, uh, Josh Prentice's. See if we could grab uh, Asher Rees down the other end just quickly. Yeah, because uh, we're certainly all pretty keen to find out what the problem was. you still was. got me here, Asher. Just real quickly, mate. Hey, uh, not the best to start for you there. You, you were going forward quite a bit there at the pointy end of it. Got up to second place and you started falling back. What was going on there, mate? Uh, yeah, the old past air box decided it had enough. Uh, three meetings in, so pretty disappointing, but it is what it is. We're just got to push hard these next two. I think we gave enough or well, some points in that race maybe. So hopefully we got those and we can get some podiums in the next few and hopefully scrape through. Yeah, I mean, uh, probably the only positive of that is it came in the uh, dying lap, so you didn't lose too many spots to say press on and you'd uh, be in there, hopefully. Yeah, that's hopefully the goal. If, if we don't make it, we don't make it, but we'll give it our best shot. Yeah, we'll get back to it, mate. Cooling down, it's pretty hot work, right? So just quickly, too, from that first uh, race, we're just trying to find Malcolm Nartai, but obviously uh, right front flat for the 88V. The 4K was the spring that we saw on the track there. That's why... Uh, that's why Chad jumped off there, 1NZ, obviously the steering box, and then from that blue group, which Ethan Rees won, uh, right front issue for the 15B, 27H, broken panel, and we'll let you get back to the racing. Oh, all right. So, from the start, it's Daniel Burmester, who's going to lead them around. Again, a couple that have come to a bit of a standstill in the turn. Problems for Peter Rees, he's dropped right to the back of the field in the 10G. Oh, big pileup, we've got one 
We've got Joblin riding, sitting right up on top. I think that's on top of uh, Daryl Wallace. Boy, I'm surprised we haven't gone red because then he hit the Herald. Sent him right up through, but we're still racing. There's the hit. It's one of the cars came in on the side. Now we'll go red. So yeah, it's uh, Scott Joblin, who's perched up on top of the 991. He's kind of come down a little bit now. So we see some of the replays of the first corner. Minty, you've been uh, wandering down around the pits. What's the uh, feeling like down there? Yeah, they, they go pretty well. Bit, bit agitated, un unsure. Of the track's fast, it's hard. There's uh, quite a bit of damage that Stu's picking up on down there. Um, I just agree, you want to grab that one, Paul? But yeah, other than that, I, I, I can probably put the tyre thing to bed at the beginning of the night if you want. Um, had a good yarn with Russell Joblin and a couple of others down there about tyres and he said what we're looking for at the end of the day, he said it's just one tyre supplier under contract so it's all the same. If we get that, it'll never happen but that would be really nice. And well it's not these ones it. is it? Because you, you see it's, they're struggling. Yeah. Who's here all day? Right, Daniel Burmester, 172 is your race leader. Former winner Bryce Steiner in second spot. Ethan Levine in third. Problems for Tyler Walker, the 133 pulls to the infield. So he's got a flat rear. Yeah. Tyler Walker. Left rear flat for Round Tyler Walker. Round goes the 31. Problems for Gary Hunter, So still Daniel Burmester, 172, who is your race leader. down in turn two, the 24, Kyle Ashton, involved down there, four R spins off onto the infield, so trying to find our race leader, Daniel Burmester, still the leader in the 172, past the start finish line, round through turns one and two. Oh no, Ethan Levine has taken the lead now. In 46. So the stoppage for a couple of the cars down there in turn four. Not happy being taken off the track, the 89. Cause of the stoppage, needs to head in field.
flag jobs for Burmester, uh, sorry for Ethan Levine, 46. Your race leader pretty bunched up. As Elias Dykstra has forced his way through into second. The nine is, oh, a lot of push and shove in the turn. Oh, 9P. He probably shouldn't have done that, uh, Brett Hislop. He's pulled off. He was actually, it was the last lap. He was coming around. He could have finished the race. Pulled off onto the infield. So Ethan Levine finishes in first place, ahead of Daniel Burmester, 172. 99M Todd Hemingway up to third. Elias Dykstra in fourth place. Then 22, Richard Gaskin rounding out the five. 118, Bryce Steiner in sixth. Aidan Eustace, 97A in seventh. 98V, Jerry Linklater in eighth. Kerry Remnant 19M in ninth and 218 Aaron Alderton rounds out the top 10 fastest lap of the race for Elias Dykstra Anderton Decorators are a long established Canterbury company covering the whole of the South Island who love to support their local community. If you require expert advice from design to application then Shane has an expert team to ensure your next project is hassle free with a professional finish. Floor to ceilings, walls to roof, inside outside, commercial or residential. Let our team take the hassle out of your decorating. Give us a call now on 027 Painting. That's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators, we have you covered. We Reuse IT should be your first port of call when you need help with your PC, laptop or tablet. Whether it be a fault with your machine or a warrant of fitness checkover, the team understand just how important it is to lessen your downtime. And if your old machine cannot be repaired, We Reuse IT have huge stock of refurbished or new PCs, Macs, tablets, printers, screens and much, much more. Visit them in store today at 135 Cuba Street, Palmerston North or head to their website at www.wereuseit.co.nz Right, so here we go, the Aotearoa ladies making their way out the 22 K of Ellen Bisley will start on pole so she is the first one out so again different format for the ladies they've got three heats tonight and three heats tomorrow night combined points over six heats that's right they're going to hit pit side and uh, catch up with Malcolm Natai. Yeah, the winner of the first Superstock race of the night. We finally caught him. He's too busy feeding his face with burgers and chips up in the uh, in the stands, mate. But um, look, great race to start with. Obviously, Malcolm, it's what you wanted off the uh, heat one. Yeah, it was just good to get away from all that shit behind me and uh, go for it. It's um, come behind the back markers, wasn't a whole lot of fun, but we got through them all right. Yeah, it looked that way because the, then the, the rest of the field started catching later in the race. Was the setup going a wee bit off, or you just being a bit more conservative, being that it was heat one? Uh, no, the, the, I think the red lights help everyone. They all sort of creep on your red light, and um, we still finish with a good gap. I was happy with that. So, yeah. I seen the front end was jacked up before. Just a few setup changes there, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. We just it wasn't quite on on that race, so we're just trying to hook it up a bit better. So, hopefully the next one. And now I'm seeing around the pits a lot. So uh, you're an honest man. What's up with all the tyres uh, with uh, the uh, rags over all the tyres here? 
Oh, but like us, keep them nice and cool. Um, they're right on borderline of being legal or not legal, so um, if we keep them cool, they're legal, and that's basically while the rags are on the tyres. Beauty. Hey, we'll let you get ready for this next one, round two coming up. Where are you starting, mate? Grid 16. Beauty, push on. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks. All right, we're going to head back down to the pits. Bit of time here, and uh, Stu's with Kenneth Hunter. Yeah, I'm certainly got the uh, Rotorua man himself, Ken Hunter, the Hunter built. Mate, this event is bloody prestigious for the Hunter family. Das has won it a couple of times, your brother, and you took out Heat 1 and qualify, mate. Can't start a better way than that. Yeah, mate, we got lucky there with the track and uh, where we were positioned. Normally that's a bad uh, bad starting there, but um, no, we got lucky in that one. Yep. How's the car feeling out there? Uh, pretty good, as good as we can be, I think. Um, track's challenging, it's gone off a bit, but um, we'll have to try and make some adjustments to go forward. I say, uh, watch you at practice at Huntley, you're looking pretty quick out there. This car's obviously doing the job for you, and being the home track, uh, must be dialed in pretty nicely. Yeah, yeah, it does feel pretty good, and we're pretty happy with it. Um, she's pulling hard, motor's on song, the brakes are good, so um, yeah, we just can't wait to see how our luck goes in these next two. Well, we got a mid-pack start in the next one, I guess? Yep, we got grid 16 and then we got grid 18. Beauty, press on, eh? Yeah, mate, that's it. Beauty, Ken Hunter, got the 335, and as I say, Darcy, two-time champion, and his brother Kenny's out there trying to do the job now. All right, we're about to go racing. And from the front, it's going to be the 15. Well, Alicia Gordon from uh, Grid 4, who's jumped out to the front. So these are 12 lap heats. Round goes the 52 of Ashley Herbert, one of the local hopes in this one. That pace, you can just notice the pace come off a wee bit from the super stocks to the stock cars. Nine one five, all loose coming off. Turn two, Samantha Lane. So it's still the fifteen A. Who's your race leader through turn one and two? The 969 is, uh, sorry, the 569 is a lap down. And the race leaders race past the 969. As the race leaders down the main straight, they're going to start catching up on the back markers real soon and making their way through. So they're really just kind of finding their feet at the moment, the girls. Couple of cars not sounding all that flash out there either. Still, the 569, Brittany Ty, the only car on the infield at the moment. So lights are red. red, red, drivers, red. 471 and 42 are tangled. So something on the track maybe and turn one and two. Now the 55 car is being sent off. I'm not sure what the issue there was, or is. Ah, okay, yes. Flat. And we've got thumbs down from uh, Alex Jones in the 28. As we see some replays on the big screen. Opening laps of this one. It's actually good now the sun's going down a bit. We can actually see the replays now. So <laughs> I can see the track full stop. I've been, yes. I've been struggling to see uh, cars on the track, just getting blinded by the sun and the reflections and uh, off the windows uh, here in the com box. 
So you're saying the commentary is going to improve now? Oh, no, probably not. <laughs> Downhill from here. It, I'm, I'm past it now. It, it'll spoil it when you can actually see what's going on. <laughs> here we go. Restart. So the race leader down pass race control across the start finish line. The black 15 is your race leader. 454 Jesse Wilson Henderson. Oh, was running in second place. Gets a little involved in a little bit of a tangle there. So Kirsten Vermeulen and Miller Theo reds are on again. It seems to be a new thing reversing down the back straight is the way to go, but uh, not sure. What out of all of that they're throwing the reds for, but where are they headed? So they got. Oh, it's the white car over there. No, it's 915, maybe just that. Oh, geez, who knows? I think they've just been a little bit uh, extra, extra cautious here with the ladies, I, I suppose. And as we talked about, you know, a lot of them are now full time racers. Race week in, week out around the country at their, well, mainly at their home tracks, but around the country. For others, it is uh, that kind of girlfriend or sister or. So I'm assuming they must have got a uh, thumbs down from the, the 116. All right, we uh, go again. Over halfway through this opening heat, the Starkeys Engineering Limited out here to a ladies crown at Paradise Valley Speedway. So the re oh, there we go, the two Rotorua girls get into each other. Miller Theobald, oh no, sorry, Jessie, she's left. Uh, the Kiki car now. Uh, so they came together, running second and third. Round goes the number four as well. Um, at the opposite end of the track. Yeah, they got tangled up with a couple of other cars at exactly the same time and uh, got left stranded there. So it's the two Aucklanders running first and second at the moment, 15. Alicia Gordon ahead of Kristen Vermeulen. Of course, uh, Kristen, the former saloon racer well she's just kissed the concrete wall pretty hard there actually coming off oh coming off to uh, two white flag is out one to go and so that's changed things up here hannah pearson's now moved into second spot uh, with vermoulin having that issue down oh, a couple of big crunches coming up down in turn four Uh, but Alicia Gordon will come through. She'll take the win. We'll look at your top ten in a moment. So Alicia Gordon takes the win in 15A. Hannah Pearson, 112P in second. 17A, Kristen Vermeulen in third. Brittany Carpenter in fourth in 85G. Kirsten Kaiser rounds out the top five in 681R. It was then defending champ 14B, Gemma Holloway. 189, Miller Theobald dropped back down into seventh place. 15R, Kendall Reed in eighth. 4W Lexi Hendricks and then Jesse Wilson Henderson uh, rounding out the top 10 fastest lap of the race, Brittany Carpenter. Right, Barry, we've had a full round. We're going to see uh, the overseas drivers practice in a moment, but uh, your thoughts on what we've seen over the opening round with the qualifying for the World 240s? Yeah, obviously the uh, the odd ones had a major problem, particularly Asher Reese, but uh, yeah, we've certainly seen yeah, Simon Joplin going backwards, Scott Joplin with a DNX.
Guys, I'm here with Ethan, Ethan Levine taking away the uh, win for the Purple Group. But what that, that race was hard and fast, but it looked like a race of two halves. Yeah, it was very wet for the first half of the race, so I was kind of kind of battling a bit there, getting mid-turn pushes, just kind of waiting for the track to come to me. And about halfway through the race, yeah, it did come to me, and we managed to pull back the leader with like a straight on me and go for the win with about maybe as a white flag was coming out. So yeah, yeah. lucky that I had enough laps there to pull him back in and, and get the job done. Now I just need to do it again in the second race. So you're going off pole on that race, where's your next grid position? Grid 14, which is actually, to me, it's quite an unlucky grid. I think I've had grid 14 here multiple times and it's never gone well for me. So maybe today it will, maybe today it won't. Hopefully it will. Well, there's one thing that I think everybody recognised watching that race was you have genuine pace, like you say, you managed to pull back that leader. So coming off grid 14, I think you're still in with a really good chance. I think it's just all about around here when you're on that like 10, 12, 14, 16, those middle outside grids, you just got to get around turn one. That's, that's honestly it. If you get around turn one, you're good. If you don't, then it, it ends your weekend. You're done. Yeah. You're done. Weekend. Everyone's saying that. Hey, look, we really appreciate it. Run back to your car. We'll run up to you guys upstairs because we believe we've got our second heat song now. Sweet. Thank you, guys. Awesome. All right. Starting on pole for this one will be Regan O'Brien. Dropped a couple of spots in that opening heat. From grid 13 down to 15. Malcolm Natai uh, was our heat winner. And he, got, he looked pretty impressive. Uh, he had the car dialed in. He started from grid 4, so he was pretty quickly out into the front, Barry. But, uh, but he did look impressive and, and in control. He did. He did. And uh, yeah, got to the lead very quickly. And uh, yeah, really never challenged after that. He normally has a lot, so much bad luck during qualifying for this meeting, and uh, yeah, he's often come through the repercharge charge to qualify. But yeah, that was a, uh, a very good start for Malcolm Martai. So what are his grid four in the first one? Grid 26, uh, grid 18, sorry, uh, 16 and 18 to go. So sort of, couple about two thirds of the way back so a couple of opportunities there to make uh, make up quite a lot of ground so Asher Reeves we were just talking about him he's got uh, plenty of ground that he's going to need to make up he's on grid 11 in this one then grid 3 so this is the one where we want to make uh, some he's got to make the moves yeah, he actually in this one he actually finished up moving up three spots due to the DNFs in the last one even though he dropped all the way back to last I think he was 20th from grid 23 or something mm -hmm. so he did make a little bit of ground, but considering he'd got all the way up to six before the power steering failed, um, yeah, he'd, he'd be wishing he still had a back grid to go, I think, because he uh, he's probably just about going to have to win the next couple, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, after a 20th yes. place in the uh, in the first heat. You know, it's what, top four. Yeah. There's not much breathing space, is there? There the, isn't. The only breathing space is uh, possibly that ripper charge. So let's see how they are lining up here. Regan O'Brien uh, sitting on pole in the 25. Outside is the 10 R car of Alan McRobbie. On to row two, Jacob Bar Buckrell, fastest lap of the opening heat. Outside him, Matty Wise, also a big mover in heat one. Then it's the 77 of Wayne Slater. And well, the two 77s, Wayne Slater and Sam Hughes, both on row three. Chapman. Uh, there in the 247, the code, no mucking around, into it. So a couple went round down there. And the 77 is off. It's one of the uh, pinballs being used in the opening heat. Both 77s are off. And Regan O'Brien gets dumped into the concrete wall in turn one. Alan McRobbie is your race leader. From Jacob Buckrell, then Asher Rees. Oh, three cars. Bang, bang, bang. Chapman, uh, Ashton and Kahui all hit into that concrete down in turn three and four. Ross Ashby drives Mark Dunn to the concrete wall and the uh, two mount cars crunch into the concrete. And Chapman, he was the uh, the second biggest mover 
moved up 13 spots in heat one. Uh, that was only better by Steve Hampton with a plus 17. So Chapman now, after making up heaps of ground in the first heat, is going to be a DNF in heat two. So two cars at either end of the, the track, so I suppose you could argue who's the stoppage for. Yes. <laughs> um, but they've got a tractor at both of them. Hayden Chapman down in turn three. And the 25 of Regan O'Brien started on pole and just got dumped in there at the end of lap two, right out there at the end of the first lap. So as they sit on the track, that is how they are running. 10R, 99B, 1NZK your top three. All right, waiting for the restart. Lights are out, wait for the greens. There we go. Oh, outside front tire gone for Ross Ashby. So he's off onto the infield. And look at this, Asher Rees barging his way up to first place. As he know, Jacob Buckra looks in underneath. Tries forcing the one inside wide with three wide down the straight. For the lead, that's spectacular. Rees gets pushed wide. Buckrell takes the lead. Oh, and Rees comes in with a big punt on Jacob Buckrell. <laughs> Take that, young man. <laughs> Joblin charging up through there as well. Adam Joblin in the 62. Malcolm Nartai, heat one winner. Oh, just gets a little tap there from Maddie Wise. He was up into second place too. So these two are really charging, Maddie Wise and Malcolm Nartai. Nartai could get caught out here as he looks around the outside of Josh Carr, who he overcooks it, Malcolm Nartai. Little half spin for the 19. Costly though, because right there in front of a big charging field. Malcolm Nartai dropped seven spots on that lap. Jacob Buck with a little tangle with uh, Adam Joblin. A lot of smoke coming from the Ants Brown car. Oh, big couple of big crunches. Maddie Wise oh. and Alan McRobbie. Nartai is Nartai out. Nartai is out. Right front wheel off. I didn't see who put him into the wall, but. Uh, Come on now, stop now, guys. Stop now. Go Big, big bunch of them, apparently. I missed it. Um, yeah, I, I didn't see who else. He was on the outside, and the uh, right front wheels parted company with the rest of the car. I think we're going to get a replay of that one, so stand by as they queue that up. Steve Hampton in the 66. He was Here we go. Um, so, yeah, Nartai got a big punt. Uh, who was that from? Michael Rumney. Just big, full full noise in the back, and Nartai, then the car went ended up going straight ahead and offline, and out so heat one winner there's another one that falls by the wayside you talk about it asher reese now sitting 10th overall on points he needs a top four so at the moment michael rumney on 46 points zane riddick on 43 early days of course uh, so back to the back to the big screen for the replay steve oh, okay so it was steve hampton actually in the 66 who came in um, and put a little bit of a bumper into michael rumney and then that sent rumney into the back. Matty Wise spun around there too, so he's probably a little bit fortunate, Matty Wise, that we ended up going uh, to the Reds. Um, then he hasn't lost too much time after getting spun up, but Nartai gone after that very confident start for the former New Zealand champion, and talked about it just before the race that he does in the past have a lot of qualifying luck here at Paradise Valley. No. So back underway again. So 1NZ is your race leader. Now somehow it's saying Matty Wise is the lead. Did Asher Reese maybe get caught up in that? No, okay, no, that, that, that's wrong. Matty Wise is showing him a whole lap ahead. Asher Reese is your race leader in the 1NZ. Then back to Alan McRobbie. So it's nearly a half lap lead for Asher Reese. So this just shows you how quick that car is and what could have been in that opening heat. We saw it, the big move early on. White flag is now out for Asher Reese. Uh, 
Alan McRobbie crosses the line in second place with a lap to go. Oh, Matty Wise has spun up. Is that after the flag? No, he hadn't finished, so he's still racing, Matty Wise. Yeah, no, he somehow they got on the lap ahead of where he was, yep. didn't they? So. so orange lights are on, and he's only just crossed the line. So orange lights came on before he crossed, so he's going to be a DNF. I don't know whether he crossed under the chequered flag before the um, before he had that spin up or no, not. No, no, I, I saw Asher cross the line. Okay, and Maddie Wise did spun before okay. Asher crossed the line. All right, so top ten for that one. Asher Rees, one NZ takes the win. Former New Zealand stock car champion, another former New Zealand stock car champion, uh, Alan McRobbie, finishes in second. 888P Mike McCarthy finishes in third. Michael Rumney, 7R in 4th. Then the 66R of Steve Hampton in 5th. Zane Riddick, 61S. Another good finish for him up in 6th place. Jacob Buckrell got punted around a wee bit but came home in 7th. 93M Mark Dunn in 8th. 77G Sam Hughes in 9th. And then 198 Mark Costello rounds out the top 10. Not only do we have the amazing Brittany Carpenter, but little baby Archie. Brittany, without a doubt, you were the biggest mover and shaker in that race, going from 20 to fourth, and also the lap, the quickest lap. I know it was. Uh, it's good to be back out there. That was hectic. There was a lot going on, but I'm glad I was able to do my back grid up to fourth. So hopefully the next rounds are a bit better too. Absolutely. Now I I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but after having a baby, does it feel any different to be out there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Your body's completely different but it's still just as much fun. Well it's obviously done you the world of good. <laughs> yeah definitely definitely. <laughs> hey Brittany we do have cars coming out on the grid we really appreciate your time and little baby Archie as well I don't know if our cameraman can get a zoomed in of him he's so chill but anyway we'll go back up to uh, the boys up the top. Right checking out some of the replays now from that heat there was Ashton being spun around right and it is next of our groups green group who are making their way out onto the track 422 Dylan Ashton leads them out followed by the 7G of Scott Penn gate shut we are not far off going running and green group on pole is the 422 of Dylan Ashton outside him Alex Hill up from Nelson in the 95 12 laps coming up qualifying heat two for green group green flags and we go Ashton, who leads from McRoll, lights are red. Damien Hawk getting sent back in the 81. That's the 49 of Regan McKenzie. 23rd place in the opening heat. 
So we'll get a DNF in this one. So 4-2-2 is your race leader. Dylan Ashton who had a sixth place in the opening heat. Up from grid 13. Jordan Deere, another one of the big movers in the opening heat as well. He sits in third currently from grid 11. So a big move from him early on in heat two. Here we go. Greens. Oh, Dylan Ashton, the race leader, spins it up, coming off turn four. So Scott Penn. Leader, not for long though. Jordan Deere up the inside through turn four, makes the pass and takes the lead. From Scott Pierre and Alex Hill, Thomas Stanaway. And here comes Brent Stewart in the nine. Oh, a little tangle there between with Damien Orr down the main straight. into the concrete who's that that's the uh, 37 I think who's gone in hard out there Shane Denham into the turn three wall the five cars stranded across the track in turn two lights are red oh this is fast and fierce this one Damien all moving forward slightly in turn four all right, we're going to take a replay, eyes up on the super screen. And we'll see this. So you can see him just up there, makes his way through. On, again, very similar to the Nata. Oh, that is a big hit. Whoa. That was a biggie. Again, very similar, just that little touch on the uh, back corner of the, on the inside of the uh, rear bumper and just changed the direction of the car and he went in there very hard. Glad to see he's okay. Race leader, Gordon Deer. A few directions to move back under the red lights from the officials. Likewise, Scott Penn. So Jordan Deere, 581, leading the way. Battle going on between two former Rotoro Mini Stock boys and Thomas Stanaway and Brent Stewart. Oh, Brent Stewart's just overcooked it in the number nine. And losing plenty of spots, the Rotoro driver. Geez, he's going to lose a dozen spots there, Brent Stewart. No problems out front though, Phil Adair. Oh, Dylan Ashton, his bad race continues. Oh, he's got a right flat front. So that's a forced retirement. One of the big movers in the early heat. Oh, Brent Stewart again out to the concrete wall in the nine. All smooth though for the 581 at the moment. Three to go. Oh, who was that? Another one. Big cruncher into the uh, turn four wall. Oh. 
So Jordan Deere making good work of that one. Oh, Brent Stewart, big ride, wild ride over the concrete wall, pulled a big wheelie. That sounds very loud, the five. Uh, so, a <laughs> bit of wild stuff going on in that one. No problem out front, though, for the uh, red machine of Jordan Deer. So, our top ten. 581 Jordan Deer takes the win from 95 Alex Hill. Then 38V Zane Dykstra, 7G Scott Penn was fourth, 81R Damien Orr rounded out the top five, was in 87, Thomas Stanaway, 29G James Clark, 76B Ben Milne, 72A Cody McKee, and 335R Ken Hunter rounded out the top ten. And unofficially that makes your top four on points at the moment. 581P Jordan Deere, your race winner and top on points at the moment with 46. 72A Cody McKee, 43. 335R Kenneth Hunter, also on 43. And the 29G of James Clark on 42. And your next four there, 95N on uh, 40 points, Alex Hill. 669W Brendan Ty on 38, 7G Scott Penn 37, and 6W Paul Gaskin on 36. So that's unofficially, but at the moment, yeah, your top four Jordan Deere, Cody McKee, Ken Hunter, and James Clark. I've been looking around for some time. I don't really know why I try, but I don't want to know. Hi, Malcolm Nardo from Suck It Up. We specialise in hydro excavation in the Canterbury region, safe big methods around services. Also we do septic tank cleaning, drain cleaning, CCTV of your pipes. If you want an excellent service, please check us out on Facebook. Suck It Up Limited, 740 Marston Road, Christchurch. Call them 24 hours a day on 027 588 8809. Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031. Or visit our website www.techweld.nz Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. So Ethan Rees, you heat one winner, long way back in this one. Oh, 
certainly making sure these cars are uh, touching bumpers, moving them forward just a, a matter of a, I was going to say an inch or two, but that's... Um, a few centimetres. A few centimetres, yeah. yeah, for yeah. The, uh, there's, there's no Americans racing at this World 240s. No, there's some old people though. <laughs> <laughs> well, some old people <laughs> in the commentary box, all right. Oh, problems See again the, for uh, one of the Pollock cars, pulling yeah. in field before the start. See, it, that, and that's what I'm a bit worried about with the Frankie Wayman car. You know, you, you want a car that you know is going to be reliable. Um, I'm sure they're working on it. But... So it's always, it's always interesting when the three minute bell uh, happens and you can actually watch a stopwatch, count it down because it feels yes. like <laughs> feels like they've been going at it for ages and there we go, we're not even, only, not even halfway through it um, and the three minute bell is done and fixed. Yeah, it feels like, geez, that's surely that's been three minutes. You know, plenty of talk over the years about uh, a certain Palmerston North <laughs> tank commander and, and his three minute bells but that was it you know potentially it felt like it had been five but it was probably only two oh no, I don't know so much <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know it'd be interesting to go back in time some of them wouldn't it From the front, there's the big push out to the wall, and uh, Mooney's got caught out. Paul Vasey as well from the front row. Problems for the 15 of. Scott McEwen, he drops right down to the back. The 73 is off onto the infield. Race leader is the, well it was, Brody James. Got passed by Tyson Wooden, but James back to the front again. Here comes the winner from three years ago, Keegan Levine into the action in the number five. 15 is uh, a back marker. Oh, and backwards into the wall. I think we might have managed to just pull it up in turn one before collecting the concrete. Jack Myers making his way through now. So it's James and Levine at the front. Caleb Ashton getting in on the action and puts the bumper into Keegan Levine momentarily. Rebecca Barr up there as well. She is running hard and fast in fourth spot. Here comes Jack Myers. So there's your leaders down the pit straight. Brody James still leading the way. A few car oh, Ethan Rees. One of those caught up there and that little melee down the pit straight. So now Brody James runs it wide. Levine had a look up the middle, but that extra drive is, was out wide where Brody James was. Good battle going on here. To and fro. Keegan Levine well and truly with his nose in front now. But James is going to come back at him. 
not giving an inch. Brody James down the main straight they go. Oh, and here comes Jack Myers, takes the big dive up the inside of Ashton. Good battle going on to the front here, these four cars. Brody James has got the advantage now. So Ethan Reeves up to eighth place. Seth McConchie with a move as well. Paul Vasey in the 351 sitting comfortably in six at the moment as the white flag comes out. Was it Myers? Did he put the bumper in there to Keegan Levine? Jack Myers going hard. Levine comes back at him with another big shot. Up the inside he goes and Myers. Oh, oh and around goes Ashton. Can he get it refired? Oh, he won't. Now he will, Caleb Ashton. Oh, heartbreak for the 23R. Should have been third, ends up 16th with that spin. Right, you know, he, he was, would have been, what, four metres from the finish line? Yes. And not able to get the car refired or the momentum to carry him across. Top 10, Brody James takes the win. An 87G, 5W, Keegan Levine in second. 88P, Jack Myers in third. Boy, those boys weren't afraid to be throwing the uh, bumpers around in that one. Rebecca Barr. She sat there, watched it all unfold in front of her, ends up coming home in fourth. Paul Vasey, 351R, home in fifth place. Then 127G, Ethan Rees. 56V, Trent James in seventh. 272, Seth McConchie in eighth. Then 147K, Matt, N Matt Nielsen. And rounding up the top ten, Lance Mitchell in that one. So, Brody James with the fastest lap, a 17.3. So we'll come back and do some analysis with that one with Barry. We'll let him uh, crunch the numbers uh, from heat two of Blue Group. I think we're gonna head down to the pits and uh, well, he was pretty impressive out there with a heat win, Jordan Dears with the stew. Yeah, I've got Jordan Dare down here. I just need to let uh, Trent James go by. He just hit the revs as we are about to talk. But uh, Jordy, mate, grid 11, up to uh, take the win. Yeah, had a really good first corner there. Tucked it down on the pole line, and I uh, actually learned a trick from Asher Rees, left it in uh, takeoff gear right around turn one and two, and managed to pop out in third, and then just worked well into the lead, and went well from there. Yeah, mate, you pressed on pretty hard that first bend and everything was happening behind you, but that backed up from a nice first heat. I think it was about grid 20 up to 7th. Yeah, I didn't realise how many cars I'd passed in that first one, but yeah, 7th and a 1st, really happy with that, and we're off the grid 3 for the last one, so hopefully we don't attract too much attention and we can keep it clean. It's been a, uh, I gotta say, it's been a few unlucky 240s for you over the last few years. I mean, and you're tracking on quite nicely here. Haven't really been in the position for a long time at the 240s, but let's hope we can get through uh, nicely from grid three, get the job done, eh? Yeah, hopefully you haven't given me the commentator's curse here, mate, but <laughs> hey, you know, it's all, everyone's in the same uh, boat out there. You've just got to finish three races, so that's the plan for this last one, get out there and finish it. Good man, and uh, the rest of the Red Walker team looking pretty good? Yeah, I haven't managed to watch any of their races. We've been busy on the car, but I think they both had an all right first heat, so fingers crossed they have a good second heat. Beauty, keep up the good work, mate. Thanks, Jim, mate. So, seeing a few replays on the super screen, and uh, Barry, you've, what do you found out there? Let's see if you've crunched the numbers. Yeah, just looking at them overall, Jack Myers, Ethan Rees, seeing those names at the top's nothing new, is it? No. So, uh, Jack Myers leading blue group at the moment. Unofficial result, obviously, 49 points. 127G, Ethan Rees came through and uh, finished in sixth place in that. That takes him to 47 points. Third equal, 87G, Brody James with 46 points. 5W, Keegan Levine, 46 points. And then your next four, be worth keeping an eye on those at the moment. 56V, Trent James, 44 points. Seth McConchie, 272M on 41 points. And 34P, Rebecca Barr, and 351R, Paul Vasey, both on 40 points. So they're still within striking distance of that top four at the moment. Yeah, certainly are. Pretty tight, eh? It is, yeah, it is. Uh, 
not not very much between them. Ethan Rees, I think, has got a uh, pretty handy grid start in the grid three. They just said, I think, in that interview in the last. So, um, oh no, Ethan uh, Ethan Rees on fourteen. That was oh, Jordan. 14, that was Jordan so that Deer was, who's yeah, starting up. Yeah, Jordan yeah. in his group, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah, Ethan's still got a little bit of work to do, but um, but he, you know he's sitting he's sitting pretty comfortably. It's those ones, well you know as comfortable as you can with three points up your sleeve. But yes. I'd rather be in that position than down currently sitting in fourth or fifth. Um, so we'll be up. Yeah, that, rather be in Ethan Reese's position than uh, Asher Reese's position yes. at the moment. I think where he's needing uh, other people's bad luck or other people's help to uh, to score him the points he needs. So we take a look at this grid coming together. A couple back on the outside row there is the 5G of Josh Prentice. Of course, he's uh, been part of this World 240s for a few years now. And a couple of years ago, uh, finished in second place. It was all the Jays, and they were all ex mini stockers out of Palmerston North. Jack Myers, Josh Prentice, and uh, Jaden Ward uh, all started racing against each other and all ended up on the podium and uh, right in behind Josh Prentice is Jaden Ward uh, back out there in this one and we just saw Jack Myers uh, battling for the lead in that last one so there's your lineup pole position for this one is the 638 of Robbie Morris outside is Zach Galini at the starters hands here we go Couple crunching into the concrete. We've got one gone around. Couple have got. Oh, we got one, and there's our first rollover for the weekend. I think that's Robbie Morris. He started on pole. Yeah, it is. Just that big squeeze up and over. Wing a little bit uh, worse for wear. Looks to be moving in there okay. That's the crew. Are over there checking them out right now. Oh, okay, so uh, they've done the roll cage check, obviously. He can continue. Oh, no, here we go. Here, is this the official? Here, here comes the official now. Um... So yeah, he's, he's keen to carry on. They're doing the roll cage check. If the officials are happy with the integrity of the roll cage, he is allowed to carry on. So we're going to check out the replay. So here's the start. So Robbie Morris, the car right at the front. So that big push, and he's been sent wide. So he drops back a couple. There's the first big crunch into the wall. A lot of cars moving up the inside. And just the big kind of squeeze. So Wayne Hemi there, I think. Um, not that it was Hemi who did it, but it was just that big squeeze uh, and up and over. And no, nope, Robbie Morris off to the infield. Oh, flat, flat right front. So, yeah, no, that's not where you're supposed to be, he's thinking. He was right up there on, uh, well, I'm not sure I'll trust those points with them not having completed a lap. But mm. All right, here we go. Yeah, he did finish 12th and he won, so while he was off grid one, yeah, he was up there on point, so. Oh, some big bumpers going in in two and three. You see more and more people are doing it now. It's just that big bunt out of the way. I'm coming through. Oh, around goes the 12 car. Problems for Wayne Hemi, he's just uh, dropped back a whole lot of spots in that one. Spin for Troy Mace. <laughs> Troy Mace has just left the track in the corner and re-entered halfway down the pit straight. Oh boy. Last time I checked you weren't allowed to do that. <laughs> So leading this one is David Lowe. Oh, another one up and over. Troy Mace, we were just talking about him. 
<laughs> Maybe that's why he was avoiding that uh, that corner of the track because uh, this time he's been flipped. That that should be the punishment for crossing the pole line. Yeah. You get rolled over within the next 15 seconds. All right, we're going to go to the replay. We do have one, so eyes on the super screen. So he is down the back. So a bit of a tangle up there with Zach Glennie. Car dug in and up and over. All right, take another look. So we know we were looking now down towards the back. Well, the officials are happy, so he's going to race. He's going to continue racing. This is the... Okay, lights are out. Get ready to go. So David Lowe's just been passed for the lead. Josh Prentice to the lead now. Remember David Lowe, he, uh, he got tangled up in that big incident in race one, so he ended up off the track. And uh, with the DNF. Showing some pace here though. Hayden Hart makes the pass. A couple of bumpers going in down the end of the main straight. Again, halfway through this race, six gone. Yellow group, heat two. G, who's your race leader? It's David Lowe through turns one and two. Looks up the inside of the 66 car of Dylan Towler, who's uh, lapped down. So race leader still 5G. Josh Prentice wraps up 10 laps. One to go. And the chicken flag for Josh Prentice. as they wind down under the orange lights. Let's take a look at your unofficial top 10 for the heat. 5G, Josh Prentice, your race winner. From 722, David Lowe, Dale Stewart, 94R, home in third. Then 166A, Hayden Hart. 971C, Jaden Ward in fifth. Then 48N, Brett Nichols in sixth. Max Holloway, 81V in 7th. 8th place went to Dylan Marshall in 57V. 144, Tim Ross in ninth place. Brad McGee, 13W, uh, was home in 10th place. Winner of Heat 1, of course, so a first in a 10th. And uh, this Heat winner, Josh Prentice, with the fastest lap of the race, a 17.08. So unofficially, yeah, the two good heats so far. 166A, Hayden Hart. Unofficially with 48 points. 94R, Dale Stewart, 46 points. Josh Prentice with that brand new car they just finished last night, 45 points. 57V, Dylan Marshall, 43 points. And he's fourth equal with 13W, Brad McGee. And uh, Jaden Ward in sixth place with 42 points, but he's on grid three in the last. He's already had his back grid and his middle grid. Seventh at the moment is uh, 144G, Tim Ross on four, 41 points. And eighth, 48N, Brett Nichols on 39 points. So Jaden Ward from grid three, you would expect to move into that top four. He's uh, 
Well, he's only a couple of points away from it now, so uh, it'll be really interesting to see how some of these other guys do in their, uh, in their final heat. Yeah, that's a cruncher, isn't it? Got to do well in all three. Maybe putting that bumper in a little bit harder. We've seen plenty of it already. That turn, turn three, they're going in there so fast. And we've seen a couple of those big wipeouts. Um, but plenty of bumper work going in down there. Yeah, I was certainly thinking Jaden Ward, yeah, six, six on points and with grid three. But several of the guys ahead of him are uh, like around that grid seven mark and mm. that. So, uh, yeah, no, he's still got work to do. There's several of them have uh, made some very good passing moves. Hayden Hart's got... A few points up his sleeve, 48 at the moment, fourth place is on 43. Mm. So grid 16, he needs to make a few passes obviously, but it's not like he's got to win the race to uh, make the top four. Right, Purple Group uh, on track. Heat 1 winner was Ethan Levine. Started on pole though, this time he's back on grid 14. Right at the front for this one, 19M, Kerry Remnant is there. 9P, Brett Hislop is on grid two grid three is empty so let's check out uh, it's our first non-starter on track daryl wallace uh, who was driving the 991 c car tonight of harley rob oh yeah it's got joplin on top of yes him he did in the piece didn't he yep. so yep so and um, we never got to the bottom of that as to why daryl wallace is in the 991 car as opposed to harley rob so all right budget apparently um, but the car's here <laughs> so the car ends up here and not the driver right uh, so Daryl Wallace is missing Jamie Hemi on grid four here we go into turn one So it was Joblin and Hemi out wide. Now we've got some dramas down the straight. Car being forced up the concrete wall there and coming to a stop down the back. I think it's uh, Matthew Pickard in the 307. And Gary Hunter, is it? Can't see from our race position here. Oh, oh geez. Backwards up the track. But out front, it is Peter Rees from Kerry Remnant. Oh, sparks fly down the pit straight. Down the main straight as well as the action heats up. And Purple Group. So yeah, Gary Hunter off onto the infield. Another big punt out wide, and this time it's Bryce Steiner who's sent out there, he manages to pull it up and keep it off the concrete wall. Loses a handful of spots in that lap. One around down in turn two.
So it's still Peter Rees down the pit straight into turn one, your race leader, the 10G, leading 19M, then 22W. Shea Hambling gone around down turn four. Oh, and they just miss him as they go racing through there. Richard Gaskin sitting up in third place. So it's a good little battle about to erupt here for third, I reckon. Richard Gaskin, Todd Hemingway and Scott Joblin round through turn three and four. Who's that with a big bumper? Is that Brett Hislop? Yeah, he went in hard on Tyler Walker. Peter Rees just cruising at the moment in the 10G. So three to go. flag drops a lot of smoke from a car headed onto the infield Not sure who it is oh three wide into turn one big dives going on and a chicken flag I still can't make out who that car is who's on the infield. He is, he, the driver's jumped out. It may just be hot oil or something. Something come out there. There's the way he's walking and uh, holding himself out of the car. Still can't see who it is. Uh, Peter Rees takes the win, 10G. Ahead of the 19M, Kerry Remnant, Richard Gaskin home in third place. Then 52, 52P, Scott Joblin. Uh, 99M, Todd Hemingway in fifth place. 133, Tyler Walker in sixth. 98V, Jerry Linklater in seventh. 172P, Daniel Burmester in eighth. Aidan Eustace, 97A in ninth place. And rounding out the top ten, Tyler James, 89G. So looking at our uh, qualifying positions at the moment, the purple group unofficially, the group topped by Richard Gaskin, 22W, and 99M, Todd Hemingway, 46 points each at the moment after two of the three heats. Uh, third place overall at the moment on 44 points, just two points off the lead, 172P, Daniel Burmester, and the 19M of Kerry Remnant on 43 points. So uh, Peter Rees sitting there on 42 points at the moment in 10G. 46W, Ethan Levine on 40 points. And then next to 98B, Jerry Linklater, 39. And 97A, uh, Aidan Eustace on 38 points. So. And uh, we've got an interview in the pits now with Josh Prentice. I certainly am very happy to bring you Josh Prentice. Josh, I mean, I have no questions. I'm just going to let you tell us all how good it is to be, debut your car and come away with a win in your second race. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, at the start, I got tangled up, but then I made it, managed to find some gaps and knew I had to get some points in that one because it's quite a tough group and everyone's in the running. So, yeah, no, it was good to bring it home. We've still got one more, though, so... Yeah, anything can happen. And everyone always talks about uh, turn one and two, but it looks like the trouble actually is on turn three and four. It looks like it's super, super slippery there. Yeah, it's like real slick, yeah. real slick. You just got to be real careful. And yeah, this next one, I might, you know, the easy targets for cars to get people, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, listen, there's a mad rush happening at Car. We'll leave you to it, mate. But congratulations, that was amazing. Yeah, we got Blue Two, uh, Blue Group Heat Two winner Brody James, mate. Uh, last year it was the James brothers, I think, deciding who qualified, and this year you boys are out there doing the job, and you got the win in that uh, second heat. Yeah, no, nah, this year starting off with a bit better results than last year. Um, over the moon to get that win. It's my first win in a super stock, so pretty wrapped with that. I mean, they're all hard groups, so I'm over the moon, really. Last, oh, you didn't even think you would be racing the, your own cars this season. It was a bit of a surprise to you when Dad brought uh, Pete's car from last year. Thought you'd still be car sharing. And here you are, doing well at the World 240s, mate. Yeah, nah, we we didn't know Dad kept it a secret from us, like the first one. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just can't be thankful enough for my parents supporting us to do our dream. And, um, yeah, like I said, over the moon. That race was uh, pretty hectic. There was bombs going in everywhere in that last lap. Did you see it all going on in your mirrors and just hold on tight? Yeah, I seen it all coming um, down the front straight on the big screen. It's quite handy. You got the got the whole track view. But no, nah, um, yeah, I just kind of just ran my own race and just tried to keep it clean and not make any mistakes, and it worked. Yeah, he sounds good. Hey, look, your brother's car's got a bit of work going on. What's going on with that one? Uh, he's got a left front that keeps locking, so we've got to try find the source of that and we'll get him going good too. I mean, your car's ready to go, Mint, for Heat 3? Yeah, we're all sweet. No changes to make. It felt pretty good in that one, so we'll see how we go. Eddie, I'll quickly grab your brother. Yeah, <laughs> you've got a left front that keeps locking up, mate. Do you think yeah. you know what's going on? No, nah, I don't know. What did I say? The brakes just are jamming on the whole race, so I don't know. They'll have a look and see what happens, or else we'll go out there and help Pete, I guess. Go racing with the uh, Teodoro Ladies Crown. Thanks to Sharky's Engineering. Race 2 of 6. And Alex Jones had a DNF in the first heat. She's going to lead this one away. And Kendall Reed pulls off to the infield. She had a good result in the first heat as well. Uh, the 15R came home in eighth place up from grid 15. Well, she's just done a loop of the infield. And ends up back out there. So not sure what's happened to Alex Jones. She dropped uh, all the way back. Oh, she's dropped back to third. Brittany Carpenter gone to the lead, but she gets it a wee bit wrong coming through turn three and four. Amber Brooks and Gemma Holloway doing battle with her. There's your race leaders. On to the main straight. there coming off turn four so 471c Amber Brooks is your race leader through turn four she comes Brittany looks up the inside in the 85. Gemma Holloway, defending champ, looked around the outside, then puts the big bumper in. So the 912 has got some issues. Uh, Hazel Brown fired up again now, though. So Brittany Carpenter back into the lead. She comes through turn four now in 85. Now the defending champ has taken the lead. 
Down the main straight, 14 and 85. That's the battle for the lead with three to go. Then back to Amber Brooks in 4.71. Oh, Holloway comes hard off the concrete wall. It'll be white flag next time around for the 14B. So looking, white flag out. Oh, and a couple in the concrete wall of uh, the final turn. Gemma Holloway is going to take the win. So, Gemma Holloway in the 14B, home in first place. 85G, Brittany Carpenter in second. 471C, Amber Brooks in third. Then the 28 of Alex Jones in fourth. 42B, Lauren Swift rounded out the top five. Uh, Jesse Wilson in sixth place. Katie Prescott. And the seventh and 75p. Kirsten Kaiser, I think it's the first time we mentioned her name tonight. 681R in eighth place. Ashley Herbert home in ninth. And rounding out a rotor or trio there is Miller Theobald at <coughs> tenth place. Heat one winner, uh, sorry, race two winner and defending champ Gemma Holloway with the fastest lap of the race in 18.7. Two races into it. Barry, how's the accumulated points looking? Yeah. Thought, thought we'd just have a look at that, Paul, and. Um Certainly, yeah, Brittany Carpenter, Jimma Holloway, they dominated that race, they're dominating the championship at the moment. Um, 85 GM, it'll be two for Brittany, won't it? I think it's only showing the G there, but I'm pretty sure she's... No, I think she's transferred to Gisborne. Gemma, how good was it to take away that win? I mean, we've got a long way to go, but that was good. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely good off the start to have, a, have some good races under your belt. So yeah, that win sets me up for a good next four races. And it's quite different to the World 240s being raced at the minute. Your winner is determined over the six races rather than the three qualifying and then some finals. Yep, it is. So consistency is key. You just got to finish six races and then hopefully be at the pointy end. Long way to go. Um, any changes to the car? How's it performing? The car's pretty mint actually and I'm just going to leave it the same for the next one. Yeah, yeah. You're no stranger to winning at all, so of course if, it, if you're saying it's good, it's good. Yeah, it's definitely good. These new, like, it's a new Rees race chassis this year and just stellar. If we go through the pits, the Rees chassis are winning everything, hands down, no question about it. How safe do you feel in these chassis? Ah, ultimately. Yeah, definitely safe and, and just they have everything on point so you just basically put all your running gear in and then go racing and it's, it's set up perfectly. Steve Hampton on pole on the outside of the front row. 69W Kane McDonald. I think that says Steve Hampton on grid two, doesn't it? That grid sheet. No, sorry, no, one, hole, yep. No, that's me reading it wrong then. But then grid two is right underneath him. With 69, so 66 and 69 on one and two. 
uh, is to. Yeah, one. If, that's what happens when I'm trying to read from a distance <laughs> with my glasses on. If I take them off, I still can't read it. So. <laughs> All right, who will be the first four making their way through to the finals tomorrow night to join our six pre qualifiers? We are minutes away from finding out. Four qualifiers from each group. A few empty spots down here too. Uh, we've got time to look at who might be missing. Um, G13, so grid 15 is empty. Wayne Slater is missing. Um, grid 18 looks to be empty. Malcolm Natai is missing. Grid 20, Anth Brown is missing. Here we go. All right. So Asher Reeves straight away pushes his way to the front. So it looks like Asher Reeves will do what he can do, but then it comes down to what's going to happen behind him. Yeah, and certainly Hampton's dropped halfway back through the field already. Who was that? Buckrell right up over the pole line, making uh, make, made two passes right up over the pole line there through... Uh, was fourth across the line and then comes out of the turn in second place. Oh, we got Alan McRobbie and Mike McCarthy have a big coming together. A lot of sparks down the pit straight. So McRobbie was uh, sitting on the bubble for the top four. Yeah, that's not going to help, is it? Right, so is Kane McDonald actually going to be out there blocking, is he, possibly? As we said at the moment, Asher Reese is in fourth place on points overall. Maybe miracles do happen. Yeah. But yeah. He... McRobbie's out. All right, so McRobbie's gone. Uh, yeah, so you say Asher Reese sitting fourth on points, but he's one point ahead of Mark Dunn. Mark Dunn's down in 10th place, so Mark yes. Dunn could make up more spots. He could. Uh, likewise, likewise, Zane, Zane Riddick. Riddick. So Zane Riddick is two behind Asher Rees, but <coughs> Zane Riddick, excuse me, is in 15th place. So still plenty of opportunities yes. for them to make up more points. So Asher Rees, 1NZ, your race leader, down in turn two. It's, it's not hard to find him. <laughs> <laughs> Just look for the wing. Finn. <laughs> oh, I'll have it right by tomorrow night. Oh, don't worry, I, I was calling it a wing when we were discussing it at uh, practice the other night as well at the NZs. All right, here we go. Yes, I've since been corrected. Oh, McCarthy takes Riddick out. And, oh, okay, so, oh, McCarthy's on the mission. That's what it is. And I'll tell you what, I think Zane Riddick's taken the top off the Triple uh, Eight engine so Mike McCarthy was out there putting in the mahi Zane Riddick he's cruising around inside the pole line and now he's going to re-enter that's you know that's big tap he cannot do that no so he did nearly half a lap on the infield yes. where nobody can hit him so that might be a disqualification I would say I'd say he's got bigger problems than that anyway Paul <laughs> so uh, yeah Oh, flat tyre, right so he's gone tire anyway. Right flat, so Zane Riddick's gone. Asher Rees has dropped out of the top four. Mark Dunn has moved up. It's Rubney, Hampton, Buckrell and Dunn at the moment in the top four. Asher Rees can do no more. He just needs somebody else to uh, pass Mark Dunn. At least he comes across one of the top four on points and uh, takes him out. Yeah, true that. But then that you know, could be quite risky. But you never know. Oh, who's that who's gone around? Hampton's gone around. Chapman's gone around. Mark Dunn got caught. Oh, so Mark Dunn is going to drop. He's going to drop two or three spots there. How many laps to go? Four to go. Still Michael Rumney sitting in third place in the race. We could see Jacob Buckrell get relegated for those passes on the opening lap as well. So Asher Reeves still leading. He's going to get the white flag next time around. We've got a tie for fourth place at the moment. White flag drops. One to go.
And here comes the New Zealand champion. He'll cross the line and take the chequered flag. Right, so Asher Rees takes the win, and as we know, it doesn't matter about the top 10. <laughs> we don't care about the top 10 in that race. It comes down to our total points. And as it stands at the moment, Barry, Michael Rumney's topped the group. Oh, by 10 points, 7R, Michael Rumney, 73 points. 99B, Jacob Buckwell would hold all tickets on that. Yeah, he definitely made two passes right up on the concrete uh, in turn two. And normally if you make one pass, they ping you two points. Yes. So at the moment he's sitting there on 63. 1NZK, Asher Reese on 59. 93M, Mark Dunn on 58. And 66R, Steve Hampton on 58. So that's it, they're fourth equal. So they are fourth equal at the moment. If that gets confirmed, uh, we will have a run off Mark Costello, a couple of points back in uh, 56. He had a good run up to fourth place in that race. But if Jacob Buckrell... That would actually, if Jacob Buckrell goes back even one spot, Rumley gains even more, more. than Costello, Jonty Short and Ashby. So yeah, they, uh, that won't affect any of those other guys. No, he's, he's, Jacob Buckrell is five ahead of Mark Dunn and Steve Hampton tied for four, so I doubt whether they'd ping him five points. No, Mark Dunn, tenth spot, finishing spot. St Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Kandu Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Kandu Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Kandu Fishing Kinner, Fish or Power. Kandu Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. It's action for the whole family. With 23 tracks around New Zealand, there is no better way to spend your weekends than at a Speedway New Zealand track. Here they come to the start-finish line again. There's something for the whole family. Spree cars, saloons, stock cars, sidecars, midgets and much, much more. Pack up the family and make a trip to adrenaline-filled, action-packed bashes and crashes that only Speedway can deliver. Visit www.speedway.co.nz to find out the track nearest to you. Speedway, it's our summer thing. Okay, we're going to head down to the pits and over now to Bianca with Jaden Ward. Hey, I'm just hanging with Jaden. Mate, really, something really interesting just drove by. Uh, Scott Penn's car's for sale. Oh, that'd be a good car for you to buy. <laughs> if I could fit in it. Tell us about how your campaign's going tonight. You're all good? No damage? Yeah, all good so far. Um, Got a 7 from 24 in the first one. Uh, got caught up in that second one there down the main straight and managed to pull it home in fifth, so pretty happy with that, yeah. So, I mean, race one and two, you kind of sorted all out. Race three is going to be totally different for you. What are you expecting from this group? Well, I'm off the front row, so hopefully I keep my, keep my nose clean, um, stay out the front and bring it home. That's the plan. And, I mean, what's worse, at the moment we've got a lot of talk about corner one and two but there's also a lot of chit chat about three and four which one are you struggling if you're struggling 
What's if, I, if I'm struggling on the corner? Yeah. Uh, or finding it more difficult? No, nah, well, the setup we're running, I'm having no issues, to be honest. I'm just hugging the pole line, the car wants to stick there, and it's working to our favour, so it's, it's good for us. And I guess that's why you're up front, right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Hey, listen, um, really quickly, Malcolm's out, he's done and dusted, um, and we've got one other Christchurch car, so wish you two luck. Yeah, Malcolm's out, unfortunately, done a bit of damage, but um, that's a good point. We get Scott Tennant in the car tomorrow, get him some laps in for Teams Champ, so that's a good point, and uh, yeah, Soss has done some damage too, so I think I'm the remaining Christchurch car. Tell you what, go jump in your suit, we'll see you out there soon. Awesome. All right, we need Cheers, to quickly guys. talk about the points. Jordan Deere sitting on 46, Cody McKee and Kenneth Hunter both on 43, James Clark on 42, then it's Alex Hill, Brendan Ty and Scott Penn in the running for this one. Jordan Deere off grid three, so he's just got to uh, keep himself out of trouble. It's going to be a great battle for the miners in this group though, I think. Mm, uh, Quick 13 is empty, so that is Shane Denham. Obviously, we saw that big hit yes. uh, down there. Looks maybe some issues at the front of the field. Uh, they just crept up a little bit there, had they? Snuck into the empty grid spot. No. So, uh, Zane Dykstra. So, no, Zane. Oh, okay. Oh, no, he wasn't lined up straight. Uh, uh, bumper to bumper to bumper. Yeah, they've been doing that oh. all night, haven't they? But so. now look, James Clark then comes in and isn't straight. <laughs> <laughs> so they fix one and then... Because that does actually give you a bit of an advantage. Um, so you've got less car to try and squeeze past. All right, here we go. So yeah, look, you want to, you'd expect Jordan Deere to tear away with this one. The five gets clobbered into the concrete wall. Now Logan Nicholson, maybe. Cody McKee gets turned around. Brett Kelly goes with him. So McKee was sitting, sitting second on points. And now he's dropped way down to 14th. Two seven four took the ninety eight to the wall in turn number four. So a change at the front. The nine R car of Brent Stewart moves to the lead from Jordan Deere. Then Randall Tarrant in the sixty six. Here comes Alex Hill. Tries to put the bumper in. Struggling to get past. It's the 49 who's just right off the pace. Uh, Regan McKenzie. They're all dicing to get past and no one could do it. They are jostling every single spot. They know how important it is. And it is ferocious. Dykstra and Stanaway side by side. In comes, oh, and to the concrete wall go both of them. They both lose two or three spots. Dykstra with a hole on. So race leader again now is Jordan Deere. It's Jordan Deere, James Clark, Alex Hill and Ken Hunter at the moment. And they've got a big buffer. So down the main straight, Jordan Deere, your leader, then Brent Stewart. A few sparks off the 274. Mike Honick as he makes his way down the pit straight, out the main straight. Jordan Deere, though, doing it easy. We talked about Michael Romney and his domination of his group. Um... Jordan Deere in the same kind of boat here. Brent Stewart's just gone right off song. Was running up there in uh, second place. Yeah, fl flat right rear tyre. Yeah. So, yeah, he was running fifth on point, so only needed one more spot, but he's gone.
So again, who's that crawling around on, inside the pole line? And now comes back out onto the track. There's been a bit of that happening tonight. There has. Uh, Simon Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Right, white flag is out, one to go. I think we're sorted here. Unless there's a last lap spin for any of our top four. But I think we should be able to lock and load him. Oh, we've got one around. No, it's Brett Kelly. He's not one of the ones in the running. All right, so as they calm down, Jordan Deere takes the win ahead of Randall Tarrant and James Clark. But again, we don't not that issue it's all about the points and Jordan Deere dominating this group Barry yeah 51p Jordan Deere not quite the 10 points that uh, Romney had but 72 points so yeah another big win 29g James Clark impressive 66 points 335r Kenneth Hunter very good night for him 65 points and 95 in, all the way from Nelson, Alex Hill, 63 points. So Randall Tarrant was fifth in the group, 66A. But um, yeah, all the way back on 56 points. Yeah. So yeah, seven points off uh, of managing to qualify, basically. So the, the top four, well clear. And uh, Jordan Deere got passed for the lead a couple of times, but... Uh, yeah, finished up winning winning the heat and winning the group quite comfortably. Yeah, so it, that, that's a big gap, and I don't think uh, anything's going to change no. uh, with regards to those four drivers. Uh, and, yeah, Randall Tarrant, uh, he's not going to pick up seven points if no. there's any changes. Uh, so we might be able to lock and load those ones. Jordan Deere, 581p, top in the group, along with 29G James Clark, 335R Ken Hunter, and 95N Alex Hill. Wrapping up the qualifiers from your green group. We're going to head down to the pits, and uh, Meg is there, Michael Rumney chatting to Stu. Yeah, we've got uh, Red Group top qualifier, uh, one of the many through so far. Michael Rumney, Meg, mates, it's been a hard night at the office, but you've done it in uh, impressive form. Ten points clear at the top of your group. Mate, absolutely stoked. If you had told me that at the start of the week, and I would have told you you were dreaming like, <laughs> to get that close. But, yeah, it's absolutely stoked, man. Yeah. A third, a second, and a third, mate. Uh, she must have been well, pretty comfortable driving out there. Well, pretty bloody hard work either or? Yeah, it, was, it, it still felt comfy, but it's just been a while between drinks. We haven't got a whole lot of racing under our belt this season, so it's good to come out on the first night and just, yeah, hit it out the park, which is cool. Yeah, it's stoked. Plenty of fishing and adventure, eh? Yeah, mate, that's it. Must be it, eh? A bit of fishing this week. <laughs> that's it. Any fishing on the cars tomorrow? Is it a good check over? No, mate, she's a good old check over on the car tomorrow. No fishing even thought of tomorrow, mate. Nah. <laughs> Beauty, mate. Hey, well done on qualifying. I say it's great to see uh, uh, Rumney in the final as well. Right, cheers, Dewey. Stoked to be here, mate. All good. Beauty, there we go, Michael yeah. Rumney. Yeah, fish, fishing for a title tomorrow night. Yes. Uh, it's one which did evade his father, Lyle Rumney, although Lyle did get runner up. Uh, he finished second in a World 240s way back in, or oh, I might go 90, 92, maybe shall, 93. Shall I have a look? <laughs> I'll have a look. Uh, 
Yeah, around there, 94. Yeah, 90. I reckon it might be 92 or 93. Runner up in the World 240s, Lyle Rumney. Runner up to who? Oh, jeez. Gary Parks. Greg Johnston. Greg Johnston, okay. 1992, you got the year right. Yeah. But he beat Dave Evans in the third. So. Yeah, I, th I think that might have been a runoff, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or was, it, or was the runoff the third in the New Zealand Champs? It might have been, yeah. They, they had a couple of uh, close battles over the years, Lyle Rumney and Dave Evans. So, a couple of years ago, or three years ago, Keegan Levine was our World 240s champion. And he's sitting out there in his 5W race car with some issues ahead of this uh, heat. And, and he'll want to make sure he's sorted because he's sitting right up there on points. Oh, he's, he's away now. He's uh, right up there second on points, Barry. Certainly is, yeah. Brody James, 87G, sitting in the lead at the moment on 69 points. 5W Keegan Levine, 64 points. 34P Rebecca Barr, 59 points. And 351R Paul Vasey. I thought he'd been relatively quiet out there tonight, but sitting in the top four on 57 points, so keeping your nose clean is. Uh, yeah, he's obviously had, pays off. He's had a ninth and a fifth uh, yeah. from his front grids, though. Uh, he starts down on grid 23. Whereas Ethan Reese, who is only one point behind him, starts be, on grid 14. Yeah, so he's mid grid. Then only one point behind those is Seth McConchie and Jack Myers, both it's on 55. Seth McConchie on the front row in 272. Jack Myers uh, down towards the rear. Uh, when a couple of years ago, he's on grid 24. So, so a second and a second and a third for Jack Myers. So Seth McConch, he's obviously had a good night so far. Of, uh, he's sitting top six on points and up near, right up near the front. Oh no, okay. No, you read that wrong. What are we looking at here? It is blue group. Uh, apologies. We are looking at that wrong at the moment because that's our accumulated points as the order they've come out onto the track as well Aye. for this heat. Driving. Yeah, so they've added in, those points have been added onto our screen as they oh, came out onto the track. Oh, grid positions yeah. as well, oh, yeah. 69, so that, that's yes where the, that's where they are actually as they're sitting at the moment. Yes. Uh, at the start of this race, which I suppose is actually kind of uh, as it sits. Oh, really. I actually noticed them off the screen. Yeah. Yeah, Jack Myers leading on 49 points. Yep. And uh, Ethan Reese was second on 47. I think, yeah, James third, third equal on 56 with the 5W of Levine. But, so but, but of course, it is interesting when you, when you do put it like that because that's the points they earned after two, two races. As soon as they cross the start line, these points that we're looking at here now, Brody James is going to be leading on points. That's right. The, as the second the green flag drops, Brody James is your points leader on 69 points. So anyway... Yeah, that basically shows yeah. that if the race carried on now with no passing, that's where they'd finish. Yes. So, uh, but interestingly, the, the uh, most of the guys from the top four uh, are still sitting up there now in a slightly different order. Mm. Rebecca Barr is the one that obviously needs to do some passing to uh, to stay in the top four at the moment, and Paul Vasey. All right, one more walk down the grid for the officials. So Ethan Rees. Uh, empty grid behind him. Uh, so Dave Merritt, again in the one of the orange cars, um, not making it out. Two DNFs for the 27 tonight. All right, here we go. 12 laps. Who from Blue Group will make it through? Let's go racing. Couple out into the concrete wall. Oh no, Paul Vasey is one of them. He's hooked reverse and he's out of there just in time. Just in time. Oh, around goes Tyson Wood and spins up in front of Rebecca Barr.
So Brody James, oh, turn. Seth McConchie gets taken there. Who's that uh, who put the bumper in there? Oh, Brody James. Also, oh, that is the battle for third place. Keegan Levine, the race leader. So look at this. Jack Myers started down on grid 24. He is now up into fifth place. He's got the 88 machine moving. So Keegan Levine, the race leader, in number five. Brody James back up into second from Seth McConchie. Seth McConchie looks up the end. McConchie needs to be making these passes. He's just slipping just off the pace for the top four. We've got Keegan Levine, Jack Myers, Brody James, and Ethan Rees in your top four at the moment as it sits. Brody James puts the big bumper into Seth McConchie. So it's a good battle. This is the battle for second, third, and fourth. Looking down into turn one. McConchie, Brody James, then Jack Myers. Keegan Levine just Putting a little bit of distance between himself and those chasers. Ethan Rees is back in sixth. He is two points ahead of Seth McConchie as far as the championship goes. who had spun but no it's the 717 just uh, hiding behind a tractor so still Keegan Levine who leads the way round goes Shannon Orr with a big spin in turn two Jack Myers, Seth McConchie both at the pointy end of the field. Might not be enough for Seth in the 272 though. So the white flag is out, one to go. And here comes Keegan Levine, he'll take the win. So as they bring these cars down to orange light pace, Keegan Levine with the win from Brody James and Jack Myers, the top three in the race. But overall, blue group uh, topped by a couple of former champions, Barry. Yeah, 88P Jack Myers, one of a couple of years ago, 73 points, 5W Keegan Levine, 72 points. 87G, Brody James, very impressive tonight, 71 points. And his uh, clubmate, 127G, Ethan Rees on 68 points. And they were actually four points clear of uh, 272M, Seth McConchie, and 56V, Trent James, on 64 points as well. So uh, those top four, 73, 72, 71, and 68. Jack Myers, Keegan Levine, Brody James and Ethan Reese through to tomorrow night based on that uh, unofficial race result. Uh, James was actually just looking for the results of his last race and to see if he qualified and I thought I'd pull him over and tell you mate you have qualified and uh, according to Barry upstairs second in your group mate. Uh, it's pretty awesome yeah we had a pretty good night so yeah stoked with the results yeah over the moon. Uh, the fifth, seventh, and third, something like that. So nice uh, odd numbers for you. Yeah, yeah, we were, um, yeah, we lost a couple of spots in the last corner of uh, the second race, but yeah, made it up in the third race, sort of coming home strong. So 
overly pretty stoked with uh, how we finished. So yeah, it's a good night. Yep. You've been chipping away at these championships over the years, even in the old stocky. You managed to make it in New Zealand Stock Car Champs finals, but you finally cracked a good uh, World 240s final, mate. Yeah, this is our second time here, so yeah, pretty pretty happy with that result. Um, yes, yeah, awesome track credit to Stan and the crew. Um, yeah, really good night on uh, at Rotorua tonight. So yeah, awesome. Look forward to tomorrow night. There seems to be a few uh, G cars piling up in the final already, mate, and there's only been three groups run. Yeah, no, the boys have been going strong, so really looking forward to tomorrow night. Should be able to uh, pull something together and, yeah, yeah, see how we get on. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Good man, mate. Well, you don't need to wait for the result. It's already there. Qualify three. Well done. Uh, cheers, Stu. Thank you. So some replays on the uh, big screen at the moment. Just while we're catching up with those points in that there, so yeah, Stu's right, those uh, Gisborne qualifiers are piling up. James Clark, <laughs> Brody James, Ethan Reese, Asher Reese, and that's uh, three groups out of the five. Right, so it's uh, attention now into the yellow group, and heat winners So this one. Brad McGee from Wellington won the first heat, followed that up with a tenth. And 5G, Josh Prentice. You want to talk about G-Cars in the finals, he's uh, quite likely set to be another one. And eighth, followed by a first, and he starts up on grid number seven. Um, for this one, pole sitter will be David Lowe. Got caught up in that incident in the opening heat, forcing a DNF. Raced hard and battled hard through race two for a second place. So he'll start on grid one. Grid two looks as though it is empty. Should have been Les Hipworth. 221st placings. So a tough night at the office for the 22R car. Won't make the start for this one. In fact, there's quite a few empty. Oh, there's more coming through now. So actually, yeah, leading on points, uh, we had... Hayden Hart on 48. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't noted them down. Um, All right, oh, well, yeah, we're about to go well, racing anyway. Yeah, obviously we need to make a, a note of those. Uh, well, we have got qualifying tomorrow night, but yeah, when we go back to the screen, once they're out the pit gate, it's already been updated, but once the lap's gone, be able to update you where we yeah. are in the yellow group. All right, and at the front of the field is Jaden Ward running comfortably, David Lowe, then Wayne Hemi, who's on a real charge. He's got a lot of points to make up. Josh Prentice topping the group at the moment. Josh Prentice, Jaden Ward, Dale Stewart, Brad McGee are your top four as it stands, but it's early in the race and there's other drivers who can start making their way through the field. Hayden Hart is down in 13th at the moment. Yes, yeah, so Hart's dropped out of the, uh, the top four at the moment. He'd been right up there leading into this one, but... Certainly you've got uh, plenty of cars you can pass to make up that ground. He started on grid 16 and uh, he's dropped, he's only up to 13th after three laps and kind of sitting on his own uh, in the field at the moment, so not looking to make too many passes at the moment. So he's going to have to uh, do something and hope that other stuff happens because, again, that top four have kind of got a bit of a break on uh, the rest of the field at the moment. Certainly the top three, haven't they? So uh, Josh Prentice, 70, Dale, St Dale Stewart, uh, 69, Jane Ford, 68 points. So, so Jaden Ward is your race leader in the 971C, down underneath race control. He's got a good gap too, back to Josh Prentice in the 5G, and then 581P, Wayne Hemi is running there in third spot. Well, we've got 
one come to a stop down in the turn two wall. Oh, it's Robbie Morris minus his wing, of course. And he's got issues and he's pulled onto the infield. So he is gone. Three to go. Bit of smoke coming from underneath the Dylan Marshall 57 car. Adamson and Holloway having some issues down the main straight. Or the pit straight, sorry. Jaden Ward continues to lead in the 971, just doing it easy at the moment. With one to go, he's just cruising. Long way back to Josh Prentice and Wayne Hemi. And the chicken flag falls. So Jaden Ward, Josh Prentice and Wayne Hemi, your top three in the race, but only two of them uh, making it through to the finals tonight, Barry. Yeah, Josh Prentice, he'll be absolutely wrecked with the new car. He was stoked after it finished the first heat so well. <laughs> oh, actually even just getting, getting the thing out there, I think he was interviewed at the uh, parade time. So 70 points he's finished up out of the maximum, 78. Jaden Ward, 971C, 68 points. 94R, Dale Stewart, 68 points also. And 13W, Brad McGee, 66 points. So Hayden Hart, he'll be gutted he's missed by one point. Yeah, so but we'll just, just hold like th that, that one point. That could change uh, because, you know, if, if there is a relegation that may affect one of those drivers. Might not be them that gets relegated. That's right. Uh, but it could just change, alter their points if somebody else moves and they were close around them. So uh, we will watch that. But at this stage, out of yellow group, Josh Prentice, 5G, Jaden Ward, 971C, Dale Stewart, 94R, and Brad McGee, 13W. A few of the... A few names falling by the wayside and a few surprises popping up, uh, Barry, and amongst the, yeah. the qualifiers, which, which is a good thing. I think that um, Brad McGee, I think, was a... Uh, I think he changed number because he changed car or something from his original entry for this event. Mm -hmm. I, I seem to remember somebody saying so um, that that wasn't the car that he originally entered in, but whatever he's jumped in, he's uh, sitting there... Uh, just just in the top four at the moment by a point. All right, green group. Just looking at this uh, sheet which has come through to us. Jordan Deer on 72. James Clark on 66. Yep. The 29G. It, uh, Kenneth Hunter on 65. 65. Alex Hill on 63. Yep. It's okay. That's exactly as we had as, as we called it. So green yep. group is as we had called it. Right, purple group. And a three-minute bell for a couple of the cars. Aaron Alderton and also the 5M of Elias Dykstra. both away and happy right so purple group um, after the two heats Todd Hemingway on 46 the 99M and Richard Gaskin on 46 22W uh, we had on 44 points Daniel Burmester 172P 19M Kerry Remnant on 43 10G Peter Rees on 42, uh, but Rees first out the gate and sitting on pole position, so uh, he's 
looking pretty good at the moment. So Peter Rees on pole and uh, Aaron Alderton. Just those few little issues there at the pit gate and a three minute bell. So later round we'll reverse into grid two. So Peter Rees and Todd Hemingway up towards the front there. Daniel Burmester back on grid 22. All right, in the starter's hands. Here we go. Revenant a long way back in this one as well, behind Burmester at the start, so a bit of ground for them to make up. And Gary Hunter getting driven off onto the infield. He's uh, had a rough night. Oh, Aaron Alderton from that front row start, even rougher. It's Coxhead gets spun out onto the grass. Oh, Richard Gaskin's been dropped all the way back to the back of the field as well. That's not what he needed. He was right up there on points, the Wellingtonian. Yeah, it was first equal, now seventh. Oh, Elias Dykstra. Oh, Daniel Burmester's coming under massive attack. So Tyler Walker bouncing off the concrete walls. So there's a couple of them who are after Daniel Burmester. Oh, look out here. Oh, he just got that one a bit wrong. He's way outside the points at the moment, though, uh, Daniel Burmester. It is Peter Rees, Todd Hemingway, Aidan Eustace. Oh, there's a battle and a half. And Kerry Remnant are uh, your top four. Oh, we've got a couple in the concrete. Oh, it's Burmester. I took my eye off him. And he got pummeled by James. Is it the James car that's out there? Yeah, the 89. Oh. Yeah, somebody else just parked in front of Burmester when he tried to move away from the wall. So, so it was yeah, it was Tyler James who uh, got Burmester big time. All right, so race leader is Peter Rees. Oh, and Kerry Remnant's just been smashed by Burmester. He just lined him up and put him away. Now who's Jamie Hemi after? So Remnant was oh. third equal with two other cars. Jamie Hemi just took uh, Jerry Linklater into the wall big time. And he's after him again. Look out down there in turn number one. Oh no, he just pulled out of it there, Hemi. No, he's gonna push him again. And a big hit. So they're starting to dish it up in this one and he's still after him, Hemi. Oh, and who else is coming? Kind of jumped in the way there. Peter Reeves still leading the race. One to go. Oh, Elias Dykstra's gonna line him up. No, he's just nips up the inside. This time in turn three, Hemi full on it. Can't follow him in. It's all go. White flag out, one to go for Peter Rees. Oh, we could have a... We could have a three-way runoff here at the moment, the way it's shaping up. No, I thought uh, Richard, I thought Bryce Steiner picked up an extra point there on the last lap, but he didn't. Oh boy, action-packed in that one. Peter Rees takes the win from Tyler Walker and Bryce Steiner. They were your top three. Uh, but when it comes to the finals, our top four, uh, yeah. how's it shaping up, Barry? Peter Rees certainly making the uh, the most of that front row start in that one. Uh, 68 points for Peter Rees, 99M Todd Hemingway, 67 points. 
46W, Ethan Levine climbed into that top four in the last couple of laps, 62 points. 22W, Richard Gaskin, 62 points. And yeah, just missing out by one point, 118R, Bryce Stein on 61. Aiden Eustace on 56. He was, was in sitting in that top four for a fair bit of that race. I, I wonder if something happened to Aiden Eustace late in the race. Um, because everybody kind of, look, I think they picked up a whole lot of points there. It were extra points for a whole lot of people in the finish of the race. So maybe Aiden Eustace, something uh, happened with him. He's finished in ninth in the end. Yeah. Hi, Malcolm Nardo from Suck It Up. We specialise in hydro excavation in the Canterbury region. Safe big methods around services. Also we do septic tank cleaning, drain cleaning, CCTV of your pipes. If you want an excellent service, please check us out on Facebook. Suck It Up Limited, 740 Marston Road, Christchurch. Call them 24 hours a day on 027 588 so pick out a shot. That's 4W Lexi Hendricks, who sits on pole for this one. Ashley Herbert on the outside of the front row. Row two is 42. Lauren Swift, another one of the regulars here at this uh, meeting on grid three. And 914R Hazel Brown on grid four. Kirsten Kaiser of our locals on grid five and the 915 of Samantha Lane uh, on the outside. So Gemma Holloway, winner of heat number two and the defending champion. Uh, she's starting on grid seven. So she'll, after that performance in the heat two, she'll be feeling pretty confident going into this one. Brittany Carpenter is our points leader. And she starts grid 15. So problems for the 116. Who's going to pull up and uh, request a three minute bell? So I think you got pretty much right up to the start to signal for a three minute bell. So Cheyenne Sutton. Two DNFs so far tonight, so obviously things not going well in the 116 as it is. The clock is on. So this will start to give us a bit of a picture once they hit the halfway point. Yeah. Um, I must admit I haven't studied the grids form tonight, but I'm assuming they're running a three heat championship format twice through basically. Yes. So they're all getting two front grids, two middle and two rear, so this will um, start to give us an indication of where we're looking at the halfway point. So, not sure whether something had happened here beforehand, um, but he just lined them up, and out he goes. So both of these two, uh, both, into the, you'd expect both of them to be part of their respective Superstock teams in a, or in a couple of weeks at the team's chance, but uh, Daniel Burmester tomorrow night. Tomorrow night on the support program, we've got two teams races. Palmerston North Pumas against the Rotorua Rascals. Daniel Burmester uh, is doing double duty this weekend. He is yes. teams racing for the Pumas uh, and also uh, competing in the World 240s. It was looking like he was going to qualify. Uh, not now, though. All right, here we go. Sharky's Engineering, out here to Ladies Crown. Heat three, and we're underway.
Oh, a few of them going way too hard and fast into this turn and spin it up. No problem so for Lexi Hendricks, she just took it nice and easy. And she will lead them in this one. So we've got one sitting in the concrete coming off turn number two and we'll go red uh, for that one. Red ladies, red, stop now, stop now. Uh, there's uh, Hannah Pearson in the one one two. Oh, gets the car fired up and off onto the infield she goes, cause of the stoppage. 454k Jesse Wilson Henderson uh, sitting seventh on points at this point 81R Brooke Courtney she's in 17th place in this race there's your points leader well she was going into this uh, race starting down towards the back more mid pack Brittany, Car Brittany Carpenter is 12th uh, in this race so far. Hazel Brown out of Rotorua, a 16th uh, and an 18th so far tonight. So this field, it's a lot of laps. Put them across the course of the two nights. Still really just get the feeling they're feeling themselves out. They're all still potentially in with a chance to win. You can have a bad race in six and still end up fairly high up the points table. But maybe they'll look and reevaluate after three heats. So Lexi Hendricks, 4W. Is your race leader. 42B Lauren Swift sits in second. The runoff is next. Runoff is next. Lights are red. Down there in turn one. Hazel Brown. Six eight one. Of course, don't forget tomorrow night, night two of the TWS World Invitation Superstock Championships. First race will be 6.30 and it will be the Reaper Charge to decide that final spot. That will be at 6.30. Then there will be a short break and we will... Sorry Barry, I think we've just had another sheet handed up to us so maybe... Yep, there's been some changes to Yellow Group. Yeah, apologies there. That's just been handed up to me. Okay. All right. So Gemma Holloway, our points leader. Now, at this point, she is uh, in sixth place in the race. Down into turn number three goes our race leader, 4W. It's Lexi Hendricks. 
the 15A, Alicia Gordon has really closed up that gap. I think she might have just put the bumper in there too. Drops back a few car lengths again. Lauren Swift is there as well. So they are one, two, three without any back markers behind them again. Gordon closes that gap and in fact, comes Gemma Holloway with a pass, picks up a couple of spots. Yeah, Gordon is all over the back of Lexi Hendricks now. Bumper goes in in turn three. Tries forcing her wide, does it. Gordon through to the front. Three laps to go. One sideways down the straight, Kendall Reed getting tangled up down there. So it'll be white flag next time around. Lights are red. Red, 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 ladies. Down. So I can't pick the car down there. Uh, so get that to you once we can. While the stoppage is on, Barry, you've been doing a bit of number crunching uh, with blue and yellow group. Yeah, I was just about to announce it was a change <laughs> to both of them, but it turned out the yellow group, they actually had two cars finishing in fifth place and, oh, okay. and nobody finishing second. So yellow group was, as we announced, 70 points to 5G Josh Prentice first. Second equal was 68 points, 94R Dale Stewart, 971C Jaden Ward, and fourth 13W Brad McGee, the four qualifiers in yellow group. So um, once we got the, the second sheet up, that was as we called. There has been a, uh, a points change in uh, blue group, but it doesn't affect who the four qualifiers are. Um, Jack Myers goes up one point from 73 to 74. Um, second place, Keegan Levine, 5W. In third place, uh, this was 70, yeah, 72 points. 5W on 69 points now, two points lower than what he was originally given. 87G Brody James, so he's been pinged two spots somewhere. Jack Myers gained one of them, and the fourth qualifier was uh, Ethan Reese. All right, we'll come back to that, and uh, just while we were getting those results, race leader 4W Lexi Hendricks has been taken off the track. Uh, well, car issues, mechanical issues, so the white flag drops for Alicia Gordon. Although I think it was actually Gordon who was leading, uh, not Lexi Hendricks um, when the stoppage started. But Lexi Hendricks was right up there, wasn't she? So Alicia Gordon, she's looked good tonight uh, with some good placings. Won the first heat. Did struggle a little in the second. Uh, but done well in this one, coming from grid 20 to take the win. So Alicia Gordon with the win. And it will be followed home in second place by 42B Lauren Swift. 14B Gemma Holloway uh, will be sitting pretty, I reckon, uh, at the top. We'll confirm that in a moment. She was in third. Kirsten Kaiser, 681R in fourth. 189 Miller Theobald in fifth. Was then 4B Courtney Hatton. 454 Jesse Wilson Henderson, uh, 52 Ashley Herbert, 28R Alex Jones, and 569W Brittany Ty rounding out the top 10. Halfway, Barry, where are we with the points? Well, certainly Brittany Carpenter had a shocker in that one in the 85G, down in 19th place, and Kirsten V. Merlin down in 17th. So we finish up with uh, 14B Gemma Holloway at the halfway point, leading on 77 points, got a lead of 7 points. Over 681R, Kirsten Kaiser with another point back to 42B, Lauren Swift on 69. Another point back to 15A, Alicia Gordon on 68. Then Miller Theobald, 189R on 65. The top six rounded out by 454K, Jesse Wilson Henderson on 64. So very, very close amongst the miners here, only 1.2 points here and there. But Gemma Holloway, 
with some of her closest rivals having a, a bit of a shocker in Heat 3 tonight. Mm. She's now got a seven-point lead at the head of the field. Which, I suppose, there's still three races to go. Yes, that, that is only an indication, isn't it? Yep. She hasn't had a bad race yet, so, um, yeah, that may that may still be to come. Brittany Carp, the, I think she had an inside flat tyre in that one, carried that, and she only did, um, unless she's only one lap off the pace, but down in 19th place, yeah, and Kirsten Vimul, Vimulin, um, down in 17th, so, yeah, a lot of lost points for those two, and uh, Brittany Carpenter dropped to 7th overall, Vimulin 9th, so, uh, yeah, quite a long way, 62, 15 points off the lead now from uh, only being one point between first and second before between Carpenter and Holloway. All right, so this is for fourth place in the red group. Red group yep. So the qualifier, the winner of this will go through. And the loser well, will be pretty much uh, near the front of the reaper charge. Mm. Uh, so it's a four lapper. We've just had Purple Group come up to us. Um, so we'll look at that in a moment. So four laps. Steve Hampton on pole. Mark Dunn on the outside. Battle of the Bay. Rotorua versus Mount Monganui. Oh, Hampton just creeping a little bit there. Oh, and again. Oh, gr oh green flag. I didn't even notice yes. the green flag is out. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Now, do, what's what's the rules here? Is it, oh. it's, they have to be moving. We went through that last yeah, year, didn't they we? Yeah, have, <laughs> they have to be moving. So, Hampton... I, so guess, I guess when the green drops, you don't have to move then. So you, you are. You, no, oh, you, you are. are? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Hampton's taking the lead. And Dunn's going to spin him. And just like that, Mark Dunn will be through, I'm sure. Gunning for Steve Hampton. Here we go, but Mark Dunn, he's gone slow. He's so here we go, Hampton is gonna wait. Well, crawl. So Mark Dunn he's gonna try and maybe come out wide and dive back in and try and spin him again. <laughs> So that's two laps for Mark Dunn. Two to go. So it, the thing is, the thing here is Steve Hampton has to let him pass. You, you've got to let him pass because you're not going not gonna to damage him with him sitting in behind you. But this is the thing. He needs to keep moving. <laughs> now here we, here we go Mark, if Mark Dunn was to stop no he hasn't oh yeah but I was just going to say Mark Dunn you don't want to turn that way no well, it's going to be white flag this time for Mark Dunn so he's just got to get back around and and uh take the win purple group so you're just looking at the results here done is through all right so purple group uh, so congratulations mark done will go through hard like steve hampton so we had 10 g on 68 peter yeah. reese he stays there yes uh 99m todd hemingway on 67 yes he stays there 46 w ethan levine on 62 Mm -hmm. And also the 22W, Richard Gaskin on 62. Yep. Uh, Bryce Steiner on 61. So no changes. So those four are through. Peter Rees, 10G, 99M, Todd Hemingway, 46W, Ethan Levine. And what's... What was that about? No, they've... Don't know. <laughs> there we go, we are on us. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's awesome. First night of qualifying done and dusted. Uh, we've got our 26 Kiwis through for the final. We've got one more to come tomorrow oh. because uh, 
We get a 27 car final for the uh, first time at the World 240s, which is going to be bloody cool. The Poms have had a great run. Yep. Young Charlie's the fastest man out on track all night. Um, you know, obviously didn't have traffic, but hey, it just goes to show we're in for a real doozy tomorrow night. There's only a couple of Palmy cars through the finals, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that one. <laughs> but hey, there's uh, plenty of other clubs that have got a few cars in there. We're going to see uh, all out uh, a bit all, I think. Look, obviously the standouts of the night was Gizzy. Um, we've got... I, I have lost count, but we've got a ton of Gizzy cars, a ton of race cars, and the two Hut Park racing cars from Wellington coming through as well. I actually seen Alan Levine doing a happy dance all the way down the uh, pit, lot, pit way down here, so he's, he's one very happy man. Yep, certainly is. We've got a massive night tomorrow night, obviously we kicking have. off with that river charge at 6.30. Uh, we've got two stock car teams races tomorrow <laughs> night, which I'll somehow double duty this and managing the Pumas. It's going to be a bit of fun. And, of course, then the big Grand Parade, the gentlemen start your engines, yep. and the uh, all-important you know, formalities for the first heat of the World 240s. I can't wait for it all to unfold tomorrow. Absolutely. And listen, we've lost Minty somewhere along the lines tonight, so yeah. I'm hoping he's going to be out there tomorrow. We might need to put an MIA out on Minty, because yeah. I don't know where he went. Any, anyone got eyes on Minty? Yeah, we'll soon <laughs> find him. Hey, from us here at Paradise Valley Raceway for the World 240s, we'll see you tomorrow night.